Good evening and welcome to the July 1st meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll ask everyone to please silence their cell phones and I will introduce the board at this time. Uh, from my right to left, your left to right, is James Morse, who is a newly appointed full voting member of the board. Congratulations, James. Uh, to my immediate right is uh, Scott, who is a full voting member, right? Uh, my name is TJ Hurry. I am uh, the chair of the board. And to my left is Bob, Bob Dugan, who is the clerk of the board. Uh, also with us tonight is Noreen Stockman, who is the zoning administrator, and Ashley DeMello, who is our recording secretary for the night. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals is charged with applying the zoning bylaws for the town and we consider requests for special permits, variances, and appeals as provided in the bylaws, which have been approved by town meeting and the Attorney General's Office for the Commonwealth. All decisions that the board makes are made through the public hearing process. The board's goal is to hear testimony from the applicants and also from the public and to allow a full and fair discussion of the project prior to rendering a decision. To begin each hearing, the clerk will read the public announcement of the hearing and then present any pertinent information from the file, such as referrals from town departments and summarizing correspondences to the board. The applicant or the applicant's representative will then have 15 minutes to make a presentation and time may be extended by vote of the board. Uh, the board will then question the applicant and the public will be invited to comment as well. Uh, we say that public comment should be directed only at the project itself. We ask you to please refrain from making any personal or derogatory statements. Public comment can include an opinion in favor or in opposition, or it might just simply be a question about the nature of the project. Uh, the chair will limit discussion in the interest of time in the event that comments become repetitive. All members of the public wishing to speak should be wait, to, uh, wait to be recognized by the chair and should come to the podium uh, to your left here. We ask you to please state your name and address for the record. Uh, as for closing or continuing the hearing, the board, when the board is satisfied that enough information has been presented by testimony and in the file to make a decision, by motion and vote of the board, the hearing will be closed. And the alternative, the board may continue the hearing to a future date and time certain. After the hearing is closed, no more testimony may be taken. And as for board discussion and decision, uh, the board may then further discuss the project among ourselves and we would make a motion to either deny or approve. Uh, such a motion will include a summary of key findings and conditions. An affirmative vote of four members, which is a supermajority, is required for approvals of motions on special permits, variances, and appeals. A split vote, such as a three to two vote, would be a failure to carry and would result in denial of the project. Under Massachusetts general law, if a special permit is denied, the applicant cannot return to the board for two years unless the project is substantially different. Uh, so turning to our agenda for the night, we do have public comment followed by two continuations, uh, one, two, three, four new hearings, I'm sorry, five new hearings and a few items on our open meeting agenda. Uh, so up first is public comment. This public comment period is meant for anything that is not on the agenda. So if anyone is out there has anything to say with something not on the agenda, anyone at all? All right, not seeing anyone out there. Moving on to our continuations. Up first we have, so, uh, oh, actually, yes, yeah, no, go yeah, ahead. Yes, Mr. Chairman, before we start, um, I'd like to take one housekeeping item out of order. Uh, we were scheduled for a new hearing for number 14 Montgomery Avenue tonight, uh, application 41-21. We had a uh, request for a continuation, which will continue that hearing to August 19th. Um, so we won't be opening that tonight, um, but the uh, representative for the applicant will need to just uh, sign an extension for us. You can do that later in the, later in the night. All right, so if anyone was here for application 41-21 O'Reilly, 14 Montgomery Ave in Falmouth, that will be continued until August 19th? August 19th. August 19th. All right, uh, back to the top of the order. We have our continuations uh, starting off with application 29-21, Knox, 9 Dartmouth Ave in Falmouth, requesting a special permit to raise and reconstruct the nonconforming single family dwelling. A 
And good evening. Uh, good evening. And yep. before we start, um, just worth mentioning the voting members on the project uh, before were myself, Ken Foreman, Bob Dugan, Ed Van Curen, and Scott Zelensky. Uh, Ken is no longer on the board. Uh, Ed, unfortunately, is not with us tonight. Uh, so I will be appointing, I think, James. And going forward, there's only four of us. So if we were to come to a vote tonight on this project, you would need a unanimous vote from all four of us. Okay. Can we ask you for to take your temperature as we get near the end? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Chief, there have been some letters submitted to the file. Uh, so I just wanted to read a few of those in. Uh, first one is from a Joseph Eli Lafrenier, uh, attorney at law, uh, Courthouse Lane in Chelmsford. And this is regarding application number 2921, a uh, special permit for Mary Ian James Knox, 9 Dartmouth Ave Falmouth. Dear Madam or Sir, it is my pleasure to be able to support and recommend favorable action on Mary E. and James B. Knox's application for a special permit. I spent summers or a portion thereof in the 15 Dartmouth Ave property, being the house next door toward the south on Dartmouth Ave since 1955. Mary and James Knox, uh, Mrs. Knox's parents and family for decades have been wonderful and respectful neighbors. My grandparents, my mother Eleanor Testa Lafrenier, before I became the trustee, as I am presently of the trust that holds 15 Dartmouth Ave Falmouth home, have summered there since the early 1940s and have enjoyed it as a summer home for over 70 years. Uh, I have reviewed the plans on file with the town of Falmouth and believe that the proposed new home will be a lovely addition to the neighborhood. I support the application and encourage you to act favorably upon it. I, reviewed, I have reviewed the project with my brothers and my sister, Nancy McGann, and her husband, Robert McGann, family who also have stayed at our home for decades and I am authorized to convey their personal support as well. <coughs> Additionally, uh, Alexander B. Rennie, the resident owner of 14 Hawthorne Avenue, has expressed his support of the project on his behalf, and at his request, his name has also been signed to this letter with his authority. Uh, dated June 28th, uh, again from Nancy Lafrenier McGann, 15 Dartmouth. Dear board members, please know that I am familiar with the reconstruction plan of 9 Dartmouth Avenue and fully support it. My family has owned the property at 15 Dartmouth for decades, and I know the applicant's family is good people who do the right thing in the neighborhood. I trust them to carry out the, the plan as intended, and it will be an improvement to the neighborhood overall. Uh, letter from Brian uh, Merrill at 16 Dartmouth Avenue. To the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, I'm writing a letter in support of the application to demolish and rebuild the house at 9 Dartmouth Ave in the Heights. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend the meeting on Thursday evening. I live a couple of houses away from 9 Dartmouth Ave and have known the previous owners, Ann and Paul O'Donnell, and their daughters, Mary Beth O'Donnell uh, and Kathleen O'Donnell Wiley for years. Uh, Mary Beth and her husband, Jim Knox, are in the process of trying to build a year-round residence. It will not be used as a vacation home, which I feel will help keep this tight-knit neighborhood intact. Mary Beth and Jim are both very active members of the Falmouth community. Jim is a vascular surgeon at Falmouth Hospital. Mary Beth, a Falmouth Town employee, a language development teacher at Morse Pond School. I have looked at the revised plans and I'm in full support of the Knoxes uh, building this home. I have no issues or concerns. I think it would be a great addition to the neighborhood and I'm excited to see the completed project. Uh, we have a letter that was submitted by uh, Edward Kirk, attorney at law uh, on June 22nd. Dear ladies and gentlemen, this letter is written on behalf of Jean Inamorati, who is an immediate abutter of the property at 9 Dartmouth Ave. She is opposed to the project as pre presently constituted for reasons herein stated. Uh, one, I've attached to this letter a sheet with, which incorporates the drawings and elevations prepared by the applicant, which shows the direct comparison between size of the existing house and size of the proposed house. Two, a review of the interior plan shows the proposal contains a cathedral ceiling on the first floor, for example, there is no second floor over a substantial portion of the first floor uh, living room. It is an open space from the first floor to the floor of the attic. In the existing house, this area was used for storage. Three, if one includes the proposed garage, the proposed house contains four stories, as the top story attic appears to contain more than one half of the floor area of the story immediately below it. It should also be noted that the so-called attic is a door leading to a balcony which runs along the entire length of the house at the height. Four, the area of the lot is 3,733 square feet. The footprint of the structure is 1,183 square feet. Under the bulk analysis formula, 
The four stories are being considered the occupation of the 3,733 square foot lot by the bulk of the proposed structure, four times 1,183 equals 4,732 is 126%. If three stories are being considered, the, occup the occupation of the lot by the bulk of the proposed structure is 95%. This is far in excess of the occupation by bulk of any other residents in the neighborhood. Uh, there is no legal or practical need to elevate the house or create a garage. Uh, with respect to the floodplain requirements, the lot is designated AE 13. The existing grade of the property appears to be elevation 10, as a result of which the floodplain regulations only require that the proposed residential structure be elevated approximately three feet above grade. There is no justification for elevating the property to the height which is proposed. The applicant's representative has suggested that because his client is a doctor, the creation of a garage underneath the house is necessary to ensure the doctor will be able to get to his office or the hospital during adverse weather conditions. With all due respect to the doctor, it's a bit of a stretch to suggest that elevating the house to a proposed height in order to accommodate a garage under may someday be necessary and critical factor which allows this particular owner to get to work. For this or any other owner concerned about getting to work, any alleged difference uh, between backing out of the proposed garage onto the street and accessing the street from somewhere else in the tiny lot is difficult to imagine and certainly does not warrant or justify construction of a garage under the house. In conclusion, the house is entirely out of scale with the rest of the neighborhood and there is no legal or practical justification for the building of this size and scale. If the garage were to be eliminated and the cathedral ceiling were to be eliminated, the applicant would have much more interior habitable floor space than he does now, and the residents would be much more compatible with the scale and the height of buildings in the area. And again, that's signed uh, Edward Kirk, uh, representing Jean and Marathi. Uh, there also is one final letter from Jean and Marathi, uh, dated June 18th. Uh, dear members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, I'm writing to follow up on my previous letter dated June 3rd regarding the application to demolish and rebuild a non-conforming house at 9 Dartmouth Avenue, Falmouth Heights. I'm a director butter at 7 Dartmouth Ave and a third generation owner of a one story ranch house. They are on a double lot. Following your comments in June 3rd, public hearing regarding the cypress trees near the northeast corner of the lot, I've hired Holmes and McGrath Inc. to survey my property and confirm that the two trees mislabeled large bush on the applicant's plot plan are located on my property. The site survey is scheduled for July 20th. The earliest Holmes and McGrath will be able to perform the work. As for the proposed new construction, and as I mentioned in my previous letter, I am not opposed to raising the existing house and building a new one. However, the current plans are an overreach of what would be permitted on this very small corner lot in our pedestrian-friendly neighborhood. Dartmouth and Nantucket Avenues are narrow streets with no sidewalks. The cottages that line the streets have ample lawns and facades with porches and patios. The qualities define the character of the heights. The proposed house is no pedestrian access at grade and no man door, porch, or patio at street level. The front line of the house would extend out to the line of the front porch of the existing house on Nantucket Avenue. Rather than any gesture towards the street, the ground level would be completely taken up by a three-car garage and overhead doors facing the two avenues. The design of the proposed house is out of character with the neighborhood and in no way compatible with the typology of the surrounding homes. Uh, recently, I rode my bicycle around Falmouth Heights and found not a single example of a garage at grade located under a house. I also told Maravis that T-Ticket Davis will not and observed only one instance of a garage at grade under a house. It is more than a sore uh, thumb as it looms over the neighborhood. I implore you not to allow this element to alter the character of the neighborhood uh, or set a precedent for more of the same. I prefer that any new construction occupy an increase in lot coverage if an attached or semi-attached garage could be adjacent to the living space of the house. Uh, which should begin closer to grade and not raise 18.5 feet above sea level. This height is not required by the zoning bylaw and would be substantially detrimental to the character of the neighborhood. All of this new construction in the heights is set at a lower level and there is not a single home that is three and one and a half stories tall. An adjacent garage at grade could be a half flight of steps down from the living area. This would reduce the proposed new home to two and one half stories versus three and one half consistent with height of the tallest and surrounding houses. Uh, the design, the new house only pays attention to the desires of the owners in terms of blind eye to the character of the neighborhood. For example, the layout of the interior of the proposed new house has considerable airspace in the living and dining rooms above, open to above, which could alternately be utilized as floor space on the levels above, thus reducing the needs for the tall attic storage or the additional bedroom 
while reducing the overall height of the building. The house is drawn is far too large and tall for a corner lot. It is only 3,751 square feet in area. The location on the lot setting design and massing would substantially be more detrimental than the existing one and a half story cottage. Respectfully uh, request you ask the applicants to return with a proposal that is not detrimental uh, to the Heights neighborhood. And that's all the letters that have been submitted. All right, and for the applicant tonight. Good evening. Uh, my name is Phil Miller. I'm from Miller Starbuck Construction. I'm representing Dr. Knox and Mary Beth Knox, who are with us tonight. I'm also here with um, Michael Borselli from Falmouth Engineering. I'm going to have him support uh, a piece of our um, proposal. So um, going forward from where we were on our Zoom meeting, I'm going to just address the points that we left off with um, basically sort of in a bullet point format. And then I'll ask Mike to come up and comment about one aspect of that and Mary Beth on another. So um, where we left off, one of the, one of the things, one of the things that we changed uh, and one of the comments was overall building height. So in your plans, you'll see that we reduced the building height by a little more than a foot. Um, so that's, um, you know, from street to ridge. Uh, another, another item that was brought up during that Zoom commentary was, a uh, question was the height of the floor to the attic. That's been identified in your plan on a, on a, uh, by elevation so that you can understand the height of the attic. Um, Item number three, we talked about um, the patio area, which was a, um, a, a cobble area um, off of a landing as an egress. And I'm gonna have Mike talk a little bit about that. We've changed that to a raised lawn area as opposed to a patio area. So it's landing on grass and we've changed change the dynamic on what's going on there. Number four, um, we talked about garage doors and there was three full-size garage doors and what we've come back to you with is we've got two full-size garage doors, one on Dartmouth, one on Nantucket and then a small garf golf cart type garage door for um, on the, um, I believe that's on the Dartmouth side. Um, there was a question about uh, the drainage on Nantucket. You know, so at one point in time, we've gone back to DPW. They don't have records of it. They acknowledge that it was installed. They don't have a maintenance plan. It is on the property. So that's kind of where we've gotten with that is it was installed at a time when the records were less you know, um, detailed than um, now. So consequently, Scott, when we went to the, we, d we don't know how that would be maintained and they don't know how it would be maintained. So something would have to occur there, but we don't know what it is at this point in time. Um, there was also um, some concern about uh, a tree on the corner of Ms. Amor Anna Marotti's corner. <clears throat> We've staked that. Our stake shows that the tree is on the Knox property. Um, she can certainly have another survey and it corroborates that or it doesn't corroborate that at this point in time. Our surveyor tells us that the stake is accurate. I've gone back to him. so. He's saying that the tree is on the Knox property. Um, finally, I want to talk a little bit about the scale of the building. So um, the original cottage is, has an, you know, an elevation from grade of about 22 feet. We're now currently at a, you know, 34 foot nine or 34 foot six, something like that overall basic finished grade to top of ridge. 
Um, I think pretty clearly we'd get a height certificate for that and, you know, um, certify that what we build will be, you know, an engineered certificate, you know, through the building department. But there's some, there's some reasons for once you're in the flood elevation, at, the street is approximately, approximately at elevation number nine, and it's a uh, A13. And the way things have been going, you know, USGS is adjusted, so typically you're asked to go up a foot, so you'd be at elevation 14, bottom of joist minimum, which would take you to finished floor elevation 15, and probably to ensure that you're insurable for the foregoing future. If you were gonna build something anyways, certainly if it was mine, I would go to elevation another foot to make sure that you're insurable for some period of time. I mean, just sort of as a common sense, which would then take you to bottom of joist elevation 15, top of finished floor elevation 16, top, you know, the street numbers at elevation nine. So you've got a seven foot differential built into more or less your flood zone, depending on how you want to manage your insurance and everything else. And then the rest goes from there. We've asked for, um, you know, our plan shows garage under for the reasons previously stated in, in the Zoom meeting. Dr. Knox is frequently called out middle of the night, emergency surgeries, both down in Hyannis and in Falmouth, and as we know, sometimes, you know, it's, um, you know, that car has to start and you have to get there and, you know, it's, there, there's some, there, there's just some importance to that that we feel is built into our, our plan. And um, we had also talked a bit about structure and the retaining walls. So in my research, and I'm gonna bring Mike up here to comment on retaining walls, the Mass Building Code says that we don't have to permit a retaining wall four feet or less. So we, we've designed our retaining wall to conform to that piece of the building code. And um, our, our retaining wall does not require a mechanical connection to the foundation. So in other words, it's independent of. It's block, there's a spacer, there's expansion joint, and it's not contingent upon. It, it's bearing, if you will, has nothing to do with the foundation or whatever. We'd have a spacer, uh, control joint, and then move off of that. And that would, that would create the elevated lawn area that um, allows us to come out of the house to a landing and then down. Um, I'm going to ask Mike to just step up and make a couple of comments in relationship to that. Good evening. For the record, Mike Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant. Uh, I, I have a limited role. We did not prepare the site plan, but uh, I've, I've worked with Mr. Miller for a long time, and I uh, offer to um, relate my experience with uh, my work in Falmouth in the zoning bylaw as it relates to the definition of structure. And uh, Mr. Miller just described it, the situation with the block wall for the landing and the, gra the grass landing that accepts the, the timber stairs from the building in perfect detail. So <clears throat> I have some experience in other projects with this. Um, and they uh, struggled with the lot coverage uh, situation here because of the size of the lot being just just over 3,000 square feet so they made an effort they had to be less than the lot coverage that existed and they made an effort to reduce the lot coverage to uh, slightly below what the current lot coverage by structures is uh, and they did that in an innovative way which Mr. Miller just uh, described but what I'm showing up on this on the uh, screen is right out of your zoning bylaw definitions at 240 dash 13 in the and what mr. Miller described as a landing um, is in fact a structure and the the stairs that are timber and connected to the building were calculated into the structure 
area, but the landing that the stairs land on is a grass area and um, it is elevated as described um, by in, in the, the fill required for the elevation uh, was retained by a retaining wall. So the definition in your bylaw describes structure in the tail end of the sentence says, but not including retaining walls or fences, period. So the design is such that this retaining wall is not considered a structure and the landing that the stairs land on being lawn is a, is a previous surface. It's not even pavers, so it doesn't even come into play with the overall law coverage of structure paving parking. So that was a way that um, the applicant was able to uh, reduce the overall law coverage by structure below what currently exists with the existing structure. And that's uh, my role. I'm happy to answer questions about that. All right, questions from the board? James, you got any? No questions. Scott? I have one for Mike. Mike, what would be your suggestion on identifying <coughs> responsibility for that catch basin? Um, and, and, and the only reason I ask that is because in the event that it does get clogged and it does flood that intersection, how do we get away from the town and the applicant pointing fingers? It's not mine, it's not mine. What, um, what would you suggest? Well, I would suggest that it is the responsibility of the DPW to maintain the drain because it's draining the roadway and uh, it would be in their best interest to maintain it like on any other road catch basin that they maintain. They, they installed it. Um, my, I don't have a lot of the details, but there was a complaint about a drainage issue when they installed it. Um, and I believe that they would be responsible to maintain it like all of the other road drains. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bersilli? Sorry. <laughs> would, would it, to follow up on Scott's question, would, would it be possible to obtain either a license or some sort of easement, maybe through the board of the select board? Um, just, to, just to formalize the agreement <laughs> somehow. You know, we, we might not have that authority, but. It's a possibility. I don't have enough information to really say. Um, if it's in the best interest of the public, they would readily grant. Uh, a license if necessary. All right, thank you. Anything? No, I mean, Mr. Brazelli didn't do the, the, the only question I had on the original plot plan is, do you know what structures were actually used for lot coverage? I know that was one of the issues that they asked last time. I mean, did they use stairs or? Sure. I don't know the and answer. It almost seemed like you had a little leeway from the original structure that might not have been used because you're reducing, so there might be. You mean how was it calculated? The yeah, landings, just when they the did lot coverage the by structure, were, were did, did, did they? I just need to know if they included the stairs. Yeah, they did. Okay. The timber stairs were included. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's the only question. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bracelli. Uh, any board questions for Mr. Miller? Good. All set. Yep. All set. All right. Uh, members of the public, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, it's first time back that we've had this many people in the room so if you can just raise your hand I can acknowledge you and you can go up to the podium. Can I bring up uh, Mary Beth Knox to comment on um, the scale of the building? Oh um, my apologies I didn't realize that she was part of your presentation so we'll, we'll do that and then we'll turn it over to board oh, I'm sorry Thanks. public comment. Good evening. My name is Mary Beth Knox, for the record. Um, thank you very much for your time. I certainly appreciate it. Um, I didn't need to ride my bicycle to find comparable homes to our current design, as many were in walking distance of our home. This is what I saw this week. I would have the um, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals please turn to page one in your books. This is the house next to 9 Dartmouth Avenue before the teardown. On page two is the rebuild.
Page three is a home before tear down toward the end of Dartmouth Avenue. This is um, so from my um, parents' house. It's right. It's the second house up from the beach, um, and right before you get to the beach, on page four is the rebuild. Page five is the last house on Dartmouth Avenue that has a garage. Page six is a bird's eye view of the end of Dartmouth. On page seven is the former Lawrence's restaurant on Nantucket Avenue. Pages eight and nine show the current dwellings and use of the property today. As you can see on those pages um, of eight and nine, you will see the um, garage. Page 10 is one street over from Dartmouth, Hawthorne Court, evidence of a garage. Page 11 is a home near the Heights ball field, three car garage. Page 12, another home in the Heights across from the casino, evidence of a drive under garage. Pages 13 and 14, respectfully. Another home near the Heights ball field, three car garage. And when I was walking around the Heights, um, on page 15 and 16, leaving the Heights um, is a home on Worcester Court with a garage. And page 16, another home on Worcester Court before a teardown. And finally, on, um, I'm not going to, I'm, I, I know that this is fast and you have a lot of um, properties to get to, but I hope this is helpful. Um, I just wanted to show you what I saw. Um, page 18 is an example of a home before a teardown, and page 19 shows the home today. Um, on the last page in that packet, page 20, is a home diagonally from 9 Dartmouth Avenue. So if I were on my mom's porch and I was looking diagonally, it's um, Nantucket, and so that's, that's another home. And I thank you for your time. We'll just check if we have any questions. Oh, do you have any? Oh. <laughs> and, no worries. Any questions from the board for Ms. Cox? No, I, I would have asked about, you know, houses that show garages because I'm familiar with there are other ones in the neighborhood. So I, I think it's good just to have the documentation there. Sure. All right. Thank you, Ms. Cox. Okay, thanks. All right. Now for public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns out there? Ma'am, I think I, you already raised your hand. Why don't you come up to the podium? Can you give us your name and address for the record, along with uh, any concern about the project that you might have? <coughs> yes, hello, good evening. Jean Inamorati, 7 Dartmouth Avenue. Um, I also brought some visual aids, if I may present them. It wasn't my intention in my letter to infer that there are no garages in the Heights, but all of the ones are either attached or semi-attached or um, not at grade, but underground or partially underground. Um, I would just like to say that I did not see a stake today in the ground at the northeast corner where the uh, trees in question are. There is no stake present uh, right now, and that's why I have asked Holmes and McGrath to, to stake um, the northeast corner. Um, it is my opinion that the house is too large and too tall for the small corner lot. Uh, the garage under the house does not fit into the character of our neighborhood and I have serious safety concerns um, about cars exiting and entering um, from our narrow streets. There are no sidewalks and many children walk, scooter and ride their bikes in our neighborhood. Um, there's, there's no porch or entry door at the street level. All of the surrounding homes, <coughs> excuse me, have street friendly facades and if constructed as shown, this house would have no relationship to the streetscape. <coughs> the existing house does not conform to current zoning regulations and the proposed house, I believe, would significantly increase the nonconformities. Um, and finally, no plans have been submitted to address removal of the asbestos. Um, I really do believe that if, if constructed as shown, it will um, 
it will negatively impact uh, the Falmouth Heights neighborhood. And um, the pictures I've shown you are the corner of Dartmouth Ave and Nantucket Avenue looking in all four directions. Um, and the final picture is of my uh, ranch house. Thank you. Could, could I just ask a question, Ms. Emory? So you mentioned that, that there are you know, issues that don't meet the, current, the zoning bylaws for reconstruction. So what are the specific um, bylaws that you're suggesting that this doesn't meet? The current house, the setbacks. On, on the new house, on the new house is being proposed. Um, it, it will have the same setbacks. And where the front porch is, I understand that a porch is considered structure, but the front line of this house will come out to the line of the current front porch. Um, and lot coverage as well. Okay, it, you, you are aware if somebody does do a rebuild that they, they can build on the same footprint? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else, members of the public? Sir? Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Jeff Wiley. I'm a resident of 4 Hawthorne Court, uh, one street over uh, from Dartmouth Ave in the, uh, in the Heights. And I'm in full support of the uh, uh, Knox project on uh, Dartmouth Ave. Um, my understanding is it's within the town bylaws. Um, I believe it'll add value uh, to our neighborhood uh, with uh, uh, a new structure, a new home. They're year-round residents that'll bring stability uh, to the neighborhood and our community, definitely community, nobody would argue, community contributors. Um, Mary Beth being an educator and of the future leaders of Falmouth and Jim being a physician dedicated to the citizens of Falmouth. W one of the things that was, that seems striking is the concern of the garage and, and um, I think I can sp speak uniquely to that and the concerns of a garage is I'm a surgeon uh, myself and uh, uniquely qualified to speak to the benefits of a garage and the time constraints that are placed upon health care providers and the certainly in the off hours that frequently uh, we're called to attend to our patients. As a vascular surgeon, Dr. Knox uh, takes care of limb and life-threatening uh, conditions in which time is of the essence. Uh, his is a specialty that um, is really upholds the true ideals of medicine. Uh, you know, some of us have more elective uh, practices where time is not really of the essence. Things can wait, be treated electively. But when Dr. Knox is called to the emergency room or the operating room, you know, someone's limb or life is frequently uh, in the balance. How many of us have spent time, you know, scraping our windshields, shoveling our cars out of a driveway? And would we really want Dr. Knox time in the middle of the night, uh, dedicated to that or dedicated to getting to the emergency room where he can tend to our loved one in that time of life-threatening need. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Could I ask the uh, gentleman to close his camera and uh, No, ma'am. All right. Anyone else? I, I didn't hear the question. No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it d doesn't pertain to zoning, sir. So it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a surgeon and think I can freely speak to that. Understood. But. All right. Anyone else? All right. Not seeing anyone else. Mr. Bracelli? Just, just one follow-up comment about the garage. Um, I'm going to state the obvious. You've reviewed lots of projects, and you, you understand, of course, that... Uh, uh, when these houses are raised and rebuilt in flood zones, they're faced with the fact that they have to f meet FEMA standards. And often, like this house and others, there's one right after this, and there's one that was continued tonight, all in the same general area. Um, they're forced to elevate because of the FEMA standards, and so much so that there's a convenient option to drive a vehicle underneath the building. <coughs> Why not use the space? It's a good use of the same footprint. It's, it's logical. Thank you, Mr. Baselli. All right, so if there's no more public comment, then back to the board. I have a little discussion before we close sure, for yeah. the benefit of Mr. Well, I was going to ask if, any, if there's any follow-up questions from Mr. Miller or anyone else's. 
part of the actually could you just, could you just uh, confirm again just what the the new height is to the ridge the reduced Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Discussion? Scott, do you want to yeah, yeah. start us um, off? I personally, I like the idea of, of the garage under because in the winter, when those intersections are a mess, that it's it's free for encumbrances for plowing and cleaning up that intersection. So I agree with the premise, and, and especially the fact that he's got to get to to somewhere quicker than most people. So I think that that is a good idea. Um, I don't have a problem with the height. Uh, I think it is in keeping with the, with the neighborhood, and I think they were very creative when it comes to the grass landing. Um, you know, we all got to play by the rules, and those are the rules. True. So I would be in favor. All right. Anyone else? James? Uh, I agree with Mr. Zelensky. I uh, was a little concerned overall height with the attic space. I presume that we may condition that not be used for capital space. Uh, but there has been some reductions. I agree with somewhat creative uh, using the retaining wall issue to keep down the lot coverage. As yeah, a so former volunteer fireman and EMT, I certainly appreciate not having to warm the car up in a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. Philip? Yeah, so so I, I, I like the idea of the garage too, but in a, another case, it's just because in these smaller lots in Falmouth Heights and Mara Vista, there is no parking. And even if you replace some of these houses, they're going to be forced to park in the streets. So, you know, like Mr. Baselli says, you have this space, you know, why don't you use it? Um, there were lot coverage worksheets were submitted. So I actually went through all the lot coverage worksheets and checked all the ones that were submitted in the area. And you probably had a 50-50 ratio. Most of them are over 34%. But they, I mean, you've got a lesion at 47. You've, you've got 19 lesion at 68%. 83 Nantucket is at 50. Uh, Montgomery is at 54. 23 Amherst, uh, 44%. Nine Dar in Nine Dartmouth, which this would be 44. So it is fitting even within the lot coverage calculations of the area. Um, the only issue I would have would be uh, on conditioning habitable space on the third floor is that this is also now in the sewer system. So you are allowed four bedrooms by right if you ever wanted it. Um, so we really don't have to even worry about that space because they're only putting three bedrooms. And if they w wanted to use it as another bedroom. Uh, they'd have it by right. Yeah, they'd have it by right anyways. Um, you know, I understand Mrs. Uh, you know, in Marathi's, you know, issues with garages in some of these spaces. But some of these other properties that were built in the past were also built when the regulations aren't even what we have today. I mean, if you were doing some of these properties now, you know, the condominiums or some of these other projects, these would all be going back up in the air again for that garage space. So I like the idea of doing the, the raised lawn to get you by the, you know, the issue that we had with the patio space, but, um, but I would be in favor. All right. Uh, so I pretty much agree with the board. Um, hung up a little bit on the garage space. I mean, I, I, I understand they need it, and I'd, I'd be in favor of that, but uh, it's the way it's proposed with one garage space off of Nantucket and one off of Dartmouth. Um, I th it, might, it might be easier and simpler if there was a two-car garage off of Nantucket so if you look at yeah, if if you look at the basic layout that they submitted, yeah. and I think that's why they reduced that other door. Um, it's it, you're hard pressed to get two cars on and it, one and side. It, so TJ, it reduces it reduces the vehicle traffic to one per street instead of having two cars coming out next to each other onto the same street. Right, but you're you're also dealing with that sightline view off of Dartmouth with that tree there. That's what I was thinking of. But I understand. All right, well, that was my only real concern. Make a motion to close. All right. Second. Motion to close made by Scott and seconded by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. The hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. And what would be the board's pleasure? So I do a motion to approve with conditions. Second. All right. We'll get you next time, Scott. Yep. Motion to get approve. Get James into it. Right. Yeah. All right, motion to approve made by Bob and seconded by James. Uh, so, uh,
240-3C, 240-216, uh, not substantially more detrimental. Um, they did submit and have worked out with the engineering department an erosion and sediment control plan. Um, they will need to get a determination of applicability with CONCOM. We can also condition it on that. Where CONCOM is involved, they would probably uh, have to deal with the sediment erosion and control plan. Property is located on the town sewer system. Uh, three bedrooms in the current property, three bedrooms in proposed, but the uh, Little Pond sewer system allows four bedrooms by right. Uh, they revised the plan to replace the patio uh, with a raised lawn to handle any issues with uh, lot coverage. They did submit a uh, certified plot plan that shows that uh, the tree in question at the corner um, between this property and, and Ms. Inma, Inma Roddy's property uh, is located on this property. They submitted a lot coverage uh, calculations worksheet that shows that they're well within the ratio of the uh, Well, can we back up coverage? on one? Yep. Okay. With regards to, to the tree, there was testimony that a certified company certified that it was on. Yeah, it's actually, it's just so a certified plot plan. Okay. Like this, it's a certified plot plan. And, it, and we have in the file, it was done with Warwick. That was in the testimony, right? Uh, they also uh, did reduce, they did their revisions to reduce the height of the structure, which is now 34.9. Uh, they're willing to do a height cert. There was testimony that the drainage catch basin uh, on the corner, located on this property on the corner of Nantucket and Dartmouth, uh, was installed by the DPW, um, but they don't have any uh, licenses for it and the DPW would need to maintain and repair it. Can you include some language to encourage them to I think we'll, I think we'll probably formalize have to, some sort of We'll agreement. have to condition it. Yeah. Should, I, should I refer to the fact that they, they admitted that they were the ones that installed it? Right. But it's, it's on their property. They're the ones who installed it, but now right. there's nothing formal in place. So. And the town council can help with that. I'm sure they could. Yeah, but that won't hold this up. No. No, we won't hold it up. We'll just. Oh, just to formalize. So you can put as a finding that the board um, uh, suggests that uh, notification go to town council to formalize uh, the maintenance and repair of that drainage system by the DPW, which is located on this property. Property is in the AE13 flood zone. Our testimony was that uh, all the stairways were included in the uh, lot coverage calculations. Uh, they did remove the uh, shed that was on the property and use the 80 square feet as part of the bump out on the new design of the main home. Did you put on the one sewer? Yep. Located on the uh, Little Pond sewer service area. that they're removing the abandoned septic? Uh, to put what on? They include they're uh, removing the abandoned septic. I, I thought they were, are they connected? It says on the plans abandoned septic to be removed. So then. So we do that during they're excavation not, yeah, probably. They're not already tied in then. So according to the um, referral yeah. from health department, it says the, the property is on the town sewer. Uh, we could, you know, as condition on confirmation that it's, it will be connected to town sewer. Sure. And what they do with the old systems, they just fill them in. Mm -hmm. I, if it hasn't been done already. Right. Anything else for findings? No, I think that's it for now. Conditions? Uh, so per plans. Uh, we'll need a height cert at framing, mm -hmm. showing the 34.9. Per revised plans, right? Per revised plans. Uh, they will need to get a uh, determination of applicability from CONCOM. It hadn't been applied for yet. Hours. Uh, before the hours, let's see what else is in the referrals. Um, 
Uh, condition one, section, section, uh, subsection 99.1, affixing of legible numbers, time limit for compliance. Uh, Noreen, so CONCOM, so uh, engineer requested that since CONCOM is gonna have jurisdiction, they handle the sediment erosion controls, but I think we do it differently. So I think what I would recommend is that the town put that in as a standard that they follow engineering and if conservation has something more extensive they can add to that. Okay, so we can add that in. Uh, that they follow, um, put as a finding that the applicant worked with the uh, engineering department uh, for the uh, soil erosion and the uh, controls on the property. Yes, on the town, and then we could on the town website they published. <coughs> yeah, but they actually did a plan. So they did an erosion sediment control plan and yeah. we have it here so we could actually use this plan as part of the yeah. as part of the permit. Uh, and as far as the water department, this would be done anyways, but it's currently a, a meter pit, so that will need to be abandoned, and then the new service would be installed in the, in the new house. All right, anything else? Anything else from this side? No? All right. <coughs> All right, so that was a motion to approve uh, with conditions made by Bob, seconded by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. Miller, thank you. Application 31-21 Wagner 52 Deacons Avenue Falmouth requesting a special permit to raise and reconstruct a non-conforming single family dwelling. Uh, for the applicant we have Attorney Clower and before we let you start Attorney Clower, um, just like the first application, the voting members on this project were myself, Ken Foreman, Bob Dugan, Ed Van Curen, and Scott Zielinski. Ken is no longer on the board. Unfortunately, Ed is uh, not with us tonight. Uh, so that leaves us three. We'll be appointing James as a uh, voting member on this project since he was here before. And since you have four, you will need us to unanimously approve the project if we were to do so tonight. Understood. Um, and, and quite honestly, my inclination anytime as a former member board is to ask for continuance just because there's absolutely no room for error. Um, my only question is I do know that we have some people who came to speak in public comment tonight and I didn't know if it was possible to give them an opportunity to do so uh, but to have a continuance for for our presentation I want to be respectful of their time if possible understood but uh, the only issue with requesting a continuance is I'm not sure if we would be able to get back up to five members okay. so that I know the, the issue comes up it's the Mullen rule and members can review and uh, attest mm -hmm. to the fact that they've done that but that's that's at the members discretion mm -hmm. I know you I mean you could request it but that's you'd have to rely on the board member themselves to do that so I sure I'm, um, I'm just laying that out there. no understood um, and that would of course be our hope if there was a continuation um, I suppose if we proceed tonight um, if there is a continuation that that uh, a member who is missed could take advantage of the Mullen rule and, and catch up uh, for the following hearing I, I mean, I, I would hope so, but that again, that's at their discretion to, to exercise that. Sure. Can I have just a moment to speak with my clients? Sure. Okay.
Um, Chairman Hurry, I think we are going to proceed um, because we think, well, we just don't know, uh, as, as you know. Uh, nothing is guaranteed, so we'll proceed this evening. Very good. Whenever you're ready, I know you're queuing up everything on the, on the Thank computer you. there. Uh, for the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney uh, here in Falmouth, and I'm with the applicants John and Leah Wagner, uh, 52 Deacons Avenue. As you know, we are before you tonight seeking permission to raise and rebuild the existing non-conforming dwelling. Um, due to the existing non-conformities on this site, this does require a special permit pursuant to sections 243C and 24069E of the zoning bylaw. I'd like to begin by offering a brief recap of what's existing and proposed and also what has changed since our last hearing. Presently, there's a three-bedroom single-family dwelling and shed. Uh, it's non-conforming to front yard, side yard, and rear yard setbacks, as well as lot coverage by structure and lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking. It is simply not possible to rehabilitate the existing structure without triggering uh, the substantial improvement uh, threshold under the FEMA guidelines. Those FEMA guidelines result in the first floor being elevated in compliance with the flood zone standards, which is eight feet above the existing grade. The Wagners have proposed uh, to raise the existing dwelling and to rebuild a new three-bedroom home with the installation of a new three-bedroom septic, which has already been approved by the Board of Health. Since the last meeting, the applicants have made some significant changes to the proposed dwelling. What you see in red are the areas that have been removed from uh, the plans. Um, in, responses, in response to the concerns of the board and in the butter, they have sought to reduce the mass and appearance of the structure. And in doing so, they have removed the proposed cupola. Uh, they've lowered the ridge height over a foot from 34 and a half feet down to 33 feet 2 inches. The design has been redone so that each floor steps back from the street. Uh, the space is intermixed with deck and patio spaces and provides open spaces throughout both the lot and the structure. They've removed considerable de design elements, uh, including a secondary ridge, uh, elimination of a gable towards the street, and I think it's, it's really a considerable change to the plans. They've also revised the site plan uh, they've eliminated the additional lot coverage by structured paving and parking, so we're reducing from 57% down to 39.7%, making that <coughs> entirely conforming. Uh, they've also provided a color landscape plan, which is shown as page 22, which was requested by the board to better illustrate the opening of space and the greenery on the lot from what exists today. As before, the front yard setback and side yard setbacks remain essentially the same. The rear yard non-conforming setback is completely eliminated. It's going from three feet to 15 feet. Uh, prior, we had a substantial improvement to the lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking. However, with the changes we've made, it's now a complete elimination of that non-conformity. The number of bedrooms remains the same as existing. Um, the applicant also provided additional plans and comparisons that the board requested. In, in an effort to show uh, what the proposed building will look like in context of the neighborhood. I think that these clearly show that the proposed home does fit in character with the neighborhood, um, especially with the abutting property at 50 Deacons. Um, the proposed home is similar in size and height, and the ridge height is only just over a foot. It's 1.17 feet higher than the abutting property. We have received letters of support, which were submitted to the board uh, this morning by the applicant from nearly every abutter. Uh, including uh, Peter Aiken, who owns the two properties directly behind this project. He's the most affected by the project. I think that relative to the standards of 243C, there's no new nonconformity created. We have elimination of existing nonconformities being the rear yard setback and the lot coverage by structures, paving, and parking. And as we've illustrated in the requested sketch plans, there's no effects on the views and vistas of the public, and it's consistent with the neighborhood. And as to uh, 24069E, lot coverage in excess of 20%, uh, there's no impact, again, to views and vistas from public ways. And though the building is larger than what exists today, it's similar in style and size to many nearby structures. There's no effect of nitrogen on coastal abatements. In fact, we have a new septic system that's been designed for the same number of bedrooms as exists today, replacing an outdated cesspool. 
The Wagners have really sought to be responsive to the board's concerns and the abutters' concerns. I think that they've done so in a thorough and thoughtful manner. We've made significant changes to the plans. The end result here is a project that represents significant improvements over the existing conditions, replaces that age cesspool uh, in a house which is in significant di disrepair, both structurally and functionally. It eliminates a number of existing nonconformities and it improves uh, uh, the aesthetics of the site dramatically. There's no creation of a new dimensional nonconformity. I believe that this meets the standards of 243C, 24069E, and 24216. Uh, I'm here tonight with Mike Borselli and John Dvorak, the architect, as well as the applicants. We'd be happy to address any questions that the board might have at this time. Sounds good. Thank you, Attorney Plower. Board questions? We'll start this side first. Bob, anything? No, I don't have any current questions. I, I, I'm happy that they were responsive to the you know, comments we had on the changes on the bulk and reduce the height and even from the streetscape. Um, I guess my only question would be, and, and might be to Mr. Borselli, so were they adding a garage and they're going to need a driveway permit? Um, does the DPW handle anything with like removal bushes? Do they do the, the whole thing or does that have to? I mean, the plantings and stuff just happen to be on the town land just because the way it's laid out. And do they ever, um, do they look at that for any safety concerns on backing up? You know, on um, main or? Um, yeah, they, they comment on that. In fact, in this case, I can't speak for them, but the bushes out front uh, will be removed as part of this and lower bushes will be installed. So. There'll okay. be an improvement to site distance. So they, they, ironically, if you have landscaping in a road layout, you need a license. Like we spoke, we spoke about a license on the previous case for the drain. But if you, if you had um, things in the road layout, you need and you want them to stay, you need to get a license. In this case, we're removing them, and the vi uh, site distances will be improved. Anything else, Bob? Nope, that's it. All right, Scott. Mike, one, just one, just to get it on the record. We had spoke briefly before about my concern about the lack of an expansion area for that septic. We discussed the challenges of doing that. Mm -hmm. But it's your professional opinion that while problematic, it's still doable in the event that they had a failure. Yes, we thought about it and the access to the e south side of the house where the driveway is, there would be disruption because there's a patio, unfortunately. They'd have to pull out the patio to do it, but there'd be access. Right. From that side. So we're confident that. Yeah, with in the event that something happened, it could be replaced. Yes, with many excavators. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. James, anything? Nope. My questions concerns were addressed with the rework plan. All right. And my concerns have already been addressed through board questions. So over to. If I could ask a quick question, uh, Mr. Hurry. Actually, is there any way we can turn up the AC just a scotch? Because I am uh, just about melting. Which, 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 which way do you need it? All? Are you up, nervous? Up. I'm always nervous, Don't Scott. Nervous. <laughs> Does anyone know how to work the AC? Ashley. I just hit all the buttons. That's <laughs> just smash them. It was fine. cool in here when we got yeah, in here. It was, it wasn't bad before, but it has, it has, it has, it has increasingly grown hotter as my, uh, as my applications have gotten nearer. So. And then you went to four members. and then Exactly. And then, then I just started sweating profusely. So <laughs> here we are. Three or more lawyers in the room, too. Right. 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 Too many. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. All right, much better. Thank you. All right, uh, on to public comment. Anyone out there has a question, comment, or concern regarding this project? Anyone at all? Anyone out there? Once, going twice. Really feel that AC now. Yeah. All right, back to the board. Motion to close. Motion to close made by Scott. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, is there a so, oh. possibility of a discussion prior to closing, just given the four-member board? Scott, do you want to withdraw that motion and have a discussion? Or? Sure, I'll, right. I'll withdraw. Discussion of the project. Anyone want to start? Uh, so they, you know, they've made improvements with the massing and bulking, which I was happy. They, you know, getting rid of the the cupola, and I'm very appreciative to getting the overlays. They, they really do help when you're reviewing the decisions. That really, um, that really does help. Yep. It's, and, and I use it in most of the other towns, so I, I think it's just a plus for us. Um, the only concern that I had left was was that, you know, on the curb cut, but if the DPW is going to deal with the license, and, and my only concern with that is that that one Beacons Ave is a one-way street that allows parking until midnight for access to boating. Um, so I just want to make sure when they do the site distance, they have enough to get around any park curb with the 
But other than that, I was happy with the changes. Great. Yep. And I, I share your concerns about the, the original application with the original bulking and size uh, overall, but I think uh, reducing it now as it's presently before us, uh, I think it's approvable. How about this side? I think it's a, it's a lovely addition to that side of the harbor. And um, after Mike's comments that he's, you know, my only, my only uh, reservation through that whole thing was how do they get back to that? To, to jump on that septic in the event of a failure and mm -hmm. the advance of my uh, concern, so I'll be doing uh, full favor of it. Very good. James? Based on the rework, I'm in favor. All right. There you have it. Turn the AC down now? No, I'll keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I get two more hearings. Scott, you want to renew your motion? I'll make a motion to close, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. All right, motion to close made by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. What would be the board's pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the uh, application. With conditions. With conditions. All right, motion made by Scott to approve with conditions. Is there second. a second? Second by Bob. Moving on to findings. Can we start you out? Yeah. Sure. Uh, 240-3C, 240-69E, 240-216. Uh, they have a CONCOM order of conditions. They'll be applying for a driveway permit. They, uh, they reduced, they removed the cupola, uh, reduced the height. They've also um, you know, pulled back the projects of the master bedroom, pulling it back farther from the street. Uh, all that has helped to um, reduce the massing. For setbacks, uh, they've got a front yard setback uh, currently 4.8. That's minimally changing to 5 feet. A side yard will stay the same at 5.8. Rear yard is going um, from 3 feet to 15 feet, so that will be in compliance. Uh, lot coverage, uh, currently it's 38% uh, by structure. That's going to 37.9. And then structure parking and paving is going from 57.7 to 39.7, which is a, a huge improvement. Yep. Um, they're raising the structure to comply with the flood zone regulations. They're in AE 13, so they'll comply with FEMA. They're removing, what, they're removing uh, shrubbery out front, did they say? Was yeah, that? with their driveway permit, they're going to have to remove uh, shrubbery from town property and make sure that the uh, line of sight is good. Uh, Make a finding that uh, Deacon's Avenue, that area is a one-way street and allows parking from early morning to midnight, but not after midnight. Uh, they're going to be uh, replacing an outdated cesspool with a new Title V. Uh, Health Department uh, confirmed that the current property is a three-bedroom, and the new property will also be a three-bedroom. The uh, the current footprint is 1,152, and that's uh, being reduced a bit to 1,149. Uh, current's three bedroom, one story. The new one will be three bedroom, two and a half story. Uh, lot comparison uh, worksheets were submitted. Overlay. Uh, again, put that the applicant um, did revisions in response to uh, all the board's concerns from the prior hearing. All right, conditions? Uh, so uh, per plans, uh, they're gonna need to get a driveway permit. Uh, they're gonna need to comply with section 99.1 and fixing of legible numbers, time limit for compliance. Uh, will you think of anything else? Let me just check the referrals. I think that's all I have. So yeah, the removal of the old septic say? system is part of the the uh, the permit for the new one. So that doesn't have to go in. That's part of Scott's permit. Yeah. So just on the, we can just put on the septic that the um, they did appear in front of the Board of Health uh, December 7, 2020, and the new system was approved then. 
Um, and when this referral came in, it said they would need to apply for a permit prior to construction. Uh, the water division will uh, provide a radio uh, meter for the inside of the new home. How do you want to deal with construction? With construction? Hours and, I mean, there really is no place to put stuff, but they, um, you know, they do use that so much for boating. I don't know if there's a... Typical condition, if they can't keep it all on site, then work with the Palace Police in terms of... Yeah, however they can handle it. Can't, it can't be any tighter than the last one. Yeah. So No, no idea. I mean, they're, they're, all, they're all evolving into how they have to do that with time. There is parking on the street, too. It's a one way, it's kind of tight. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm just saying. With the, um, with just so the they're aware, with the boating traffic that's there early in the if it's doing done in the summer, that whole lane will be taken out. But once they do the demo, the machine will, will drop that on mm -hmm. top of itself, and then they'll be able to back into the site to load out. So it'll just be the traffic in and out. Yeah, so I guess maybe just put And then once they start yeah. building, maybe just everything goes on uh, the deck. That they can't block off Deacon's Ave right. to through traffic. Okay. Yeah. And they can always deal with the fire department. All right. You also want to limit the construction hours. Yeah. Yeah. Construction hours. Normal ones, right? Standard hours. Standard hours. I know it's under 35 feet, but I think on all these reconstructions now with flood zone, we should just get height certs at Framework. I think that's a good idea. It's just easier. Yeah. So heights are what they, they'll know what to expect coming yeah. in. Yeah, and then we know if there's an issue. Yeah. Heights are at framing. Uh, anything else for either findings or conditions? No, we put the data comply with con right? All right. So that was a motion to approve. We did condition it on three bedrooms. Correct. Three beds. Yep. Okay. That was a motion to approve with conditions made by Scott and seconded by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time this evening. Thank you, Attorney Clower. All right, that does it for our new, I'm um, sorry, that does it for our continuations. On to our new hearings. Up first for the new hearings, we have application 44-21, Hassett, 22 Royal Circle in East Falmouth, requesting a special permit to allow a ho home occupation dog care. Okay. I am Sue Hassett, 22 Ms. Royal. Hassett, if you hold on for just a minute, uh, Bob, the clerk, needs to read everything into the record. <laughs> Should I go back? No, no, you can you can stay right there if you want. You no, you're you're the first new hearing of the night, so you, you didn't see that things get read in. Probably know where to find it. Kevin did sign the sheet. Oh. Okay. So application number 44-21, Susan E. Hassett, 22 Royal Circle, East Falmouth, Mass has applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-62 of the Code of Falma to allow a home occupation dog care on subject property known as 22 Royal Circle, East Falmouth, Mass. For referrals. Uh, from engineering, application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Royal Circle is a public right of way in the area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require filing a permit with the engineering division. Two, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require uh, permission from the appropriate town department. And three, there does not appear to be any site work. Uh, water department, no comment. Uh, CONCOM, uh, CONCOM has no comment, uh, appears outside the jurisdiction. Assessors, no comment. Fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. Planning, no comment. Uh, health department, uh, no issues from health other than needing to comply with town code 83-15. The applicant just needs to be aware that this type of business could lead to a nuisance situation with neighbors if not well controlled. Uh, for example, pet waste, noise, et cetera. And uh, no uh, letters for or against. All right. You say none for or none against? None for or against. None. No comments. All right. 
Ms. Hassett, the floor is yours. What can you tell us about your project? Um, I just um, wanted to do dog care out of my house, and I wouldn't have more than two or three dogs there at a time, just dog sitting and overnight dog boarding overnight just for like people who want go on vacation and whatnot. Um, I live alone in my house. It's um, a, a colonial. I've, I've redone a lot of work. So the whole entire yard is fenced in with just one gate. And um, I just want to, wanted to get it like all legal so that I could have insurance and whatnot. Like I said, I, I wouldn't need a kennel license. I would never have more than two or three dogs at a time. It's not like I want to push dogs in and pump them out. It's just that um, this is just a way to so I can get, pay my mortgage. And uh, I actually don't have a dog of my own right now, so that was why I wanted to take the opportunity to um, just give this a go. And I live alone, so I have all the space in my house and my yard, so... Would you like to turn it to board questions? We can see if we have anything for you. Sure. All right. James, anything? Now, I see that you're, I saw the reworked plans. Are you going to have any outside kennels you're planning to uh, keep the dogs in, or is this all going to be inside the house? Well, I have kennels for the inside of the house, but I also have areas in the yard where I can fence off and make kennels if I had to split dogs up. But I don't really think it would get to that. I have enough fencing if I want to. Well, I have enough land or whatever, but like I said, it will only be two or three dogs at a time. So you'd have no, uh, you'd have no opposition to us conditioning it to a certain amount of dogs at a time. Not, a, not a problem. And how would you address the waste removal? Would that just go in bags and go yes. out in the trash? Yes, uh, I wouldn't be compost. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Bob. No, I have any questions. All right, and my concerns have already been addressed from the board, so over to public comment. If anyone out there has a question, comment, or a concern, ma'am? Ms. Hassett, you can take a seat, and we'll have uh, her at the podium. How you doing? Welcome. Um, my name is Marguerite Polito. I live at 14 Jessica Way, so I'm a direct abutter to this, this project. Um, as you know, Royal Circle backs up to River's Edge, Ava Street, Jessica Way, Josh, residential zone. This is a great app opportunity for this applicant to start a business. I'm a former dog owner myself. I've had to put two to rest, love dogs. Um, I know firsthand how it is to have good dog care, but while she's well-intentioned at all, this could really be a direct impact on we abutters with disturbances and annoyances. Man's best friend is not always a neighbor's best friend. My concerns are for noise. Um, the picture showed the she had living space in the basement, including the dog lounge. That really doesn't look, that looks like um, bunk beds and that looks like a place for people to sleep. That, that, that sure, well, uh, well, she addresses the board through through us and then you'll have a chance to. Um, how, how will the barking be controlled when the windows open? And when the dogs are out for a relief break or to play or to exercise, uh, who's going to maintain that barking? Is there going to be an outdoor run? Uh, will the dogs be out there unsupervised or will there be a camera? And how will be the noise be controlled and monitored? Already we back up to the fireworks and the engines zooming and the music playing right from the, from the um, area that's in back of us. I also feel like there could be a problem with the traffic being increased, with clients dropping or picking off their animals, or by prospective clients coming by to check out to see where the location is to house their dog. I have issues with sanitation, um, an increase of feces and urine in the lawn areas, the trash barrels where the poop is going to be discarded, an increase in flies from this. Um, an invitation for rodents with dog food that might be left out um, for grazing, and how is this going to be managed? Also, the boundary. If you take the trees down, um, it's my backyard. So what's going to happen when those trees decide to die or the weather takes them, or one of us chooses to take them down, then it's in my backyard. 
uh, what's going to serve as my buffer zone, where will the dogs be walked, and what happens if a dog gets loose while in their daycare, uh, and the dogs, they act inappropriate and chasing unwanted behavior due to the stress or the anxiety experienced and lack of uh, insecure, insecurity from being detached from the owner. Will the dogs be left alone uh, while going short term to a grocery store? And it seems like the, that question's been answered, yes. The woman lives alone. Will the homeowner be trained? Will she have extra insurance? Is there a contingency plan in case of emergency? And I read on the application, no, you don't need a, a kennel permit. Uh, well, um, what's the longest you plan to board a dog on a given time? Will it be a weekend? Will it be a month? Um, if this zoning appeal is approved, are we opening an invitation for other neighbors to come and want commerce in their homes? Are we starting a precedent? We already are impacted by the fireworks and whatnot. Remember, a zoning board of appeals purpose is to determine if the change in zoning are required because the proposal will excessively impact you and your neighbor. Now, my husband Tom and I firmly believe that it, it will be detrimental to our neighborhood. The permits that are assigned are designed to allow the officials to impose noise or the impact abatement measures. These are legally enforce, enforceable requirements. And how will that be enforced? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ma'am? <coughs> ma'am? Sorry, I, I didn't quite get your name. My apologies. But uh, All right, that, now the air conditioner is making me nice and cold. It's <laughs> starting to blow away. Can't, can't win. You, Scott you, has a question for you. You heard the, uh, the applicant's uh, testimony. Uh, yes. To you coming up. And you, uh, you heard me ask her if she would have any reservations to condition it to an, a number of dogs. <laughs> What's the difference of her owning three of her own dogs at the same time? Um, knowing my dogs, they're more comfortable living, living with me. Um, so if, if these were her own personal dogs, I think that you have more of a relationship. It's like when you have a daycare with children. When they're your own children, you can have more, better management than when you get somebody for a short term. Okay. That's my only question. Thank right. you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. All right. Anyone else have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? Anyone at all? All right. Uh, Ms. Hassett, go right ahead. If, you, if you'd like to address uh, any issues that your neighbor brought well, up. Well, one is about the land. Too. My land abuts conservation land, Manuel Rosendi's conservation land, so I don't abut to them. Um, my yard is never a mess. It's always picked up. There's no garbage barrels anywhere. I live alone, and I take a lot of pride in my home. Um, as you can see by the pictures, um, I... I just don't think any of what she said is gonna happen. I, do, I treat my animals like they're my own and no animal ever wants to go home from my house. I've never had, a, uh, even owning my own dogs, I've never had a noise complaint. Um, I don't have parties, I don't make noise. Um, it's not like the fireworks or whatever and I've never ever got a complaint. I've done this, I've watched people's dogs like my family dog for years. I've had my own dogs for years. I walk my animals every day. If I haven't met her walking my dog, I'm surprised. So I don't think there's any issue about anything that she's, she questioned is. All right. Any follow-up questions from the board? I, I have one, but it's, I, I think it's more administrative. So the referral from health mentions you'd have to comply with that 8315. So I looked up 8315, and 8315 only applies if you have a kennel license. So this wouldn't need a kennel license, correct? So could we just take some of the things out of 8315, you know, like questions about, I mean, there's some basic things in there, licensing laws and stuff that, unless we write this stuff in. Well, you could, couldn't you condition that? Well, that's how, well, we would have to go through here and just pick the sections. Well, you would be designing you would be designing based on based on the I mean That's what would it be anything? would it, I mean would it make it easier for a kennel license I mean if you wanted me to get a kennel license I don't think there's a I mean I could no, get no no I don't, I, yeah. don't, I don't think you need to it, it's just the um, like I said I'm I never gonna have more of a nuisance ever came up well, uh, that's why we'd condition it would have it. to 
You could only apply under 8315. And if it was conditioned? Which you couldn't apply under because it's not a kennel. But if it was a kennel, then it would open it up for more dogs. Oh, too many things. So, so this, I was thinking, does this only even, asking for a, does a this, moderate. Does this even need a license? I mean, a special permit? Yeah, we've so we've done home occupations with dog care before. It's been several years. But, but they've always been over. I, I guess the ones I've been on have always been over four. I mean, this is very small. This is so small. Have always been over four. And can, can I address about the basement, too? Yeah, go, go ahead. That the, the bunk bed in the basement is a dog bed, a big for larger animals, and then the top of it is storage for all the beds and the crates and stuff that I have. So, and I worked a lot on the on that room with not a lot of money to spend. What you put in your basement is none of our business anyway. What right. beds you put in no. your basement? Right. Uh, re regarding feeding the dogs, would would that be outside or inside? Well, it would be dependent. Um, I mean, I could put them on the porch and feed them, but I could also feed them inside. I mean, these aren't going to be big dogs anyway. Most dogs that I have will be smaller. And you have insurance to do this. And I paid the insurance for the year. Right. Any other questions from the board? No, sir. All right. Bob, I see you looking. I no, I just yeah. don't, I just I just personally don't know how to condition it. I mean, I, we probably easily could, but I'm not going to read. Five no, with the number of, of dogs, Bob, it can be lightly conditioned. I mean, I mean, I think a separate license that she might need would not be the whole requirement of the board. Right. Well, and she and literally she doesn't need a license. Because no. it's under four. Right. So if she did need a license, then she would be subject to that, and she could have. Right. Right. It's so never going to get like that. No more than three dogs. Right. Anything more requires a kennel license through the town, which triggers that bylaw. Exactly. And she right. Come back. Yeah, I'm fully aware of all the bylaws and right. whatnot. It's not, you know, I'm not walking into this blind. Yep. Th this is just something regarding home occupations for dog care. We we always make the applicant aware, just so they just they. It's just so they know. Sorry, tripping over my own words tonight. All right. Uh, board. I'm I'm discussion. fine with that. I'm not yeah. I'm not going to go against it. I go. just I just the health referral is just completely throwing me off. I get it. Because on everything from sanitary conditions and stuff, without a reference to this, they can't do anything. But All right. I would be on handle it. All right, so the hearing's still open. Does anyone want to I'll make, make a, a motion? motion to close? Right. Motion to close made by Scott. A second. A second by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. And how would the board like to proceed? Make a motion to approve with conditions. All right. Motion to approve with conditions made by Scott. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. All right, Bob. Findings? Uh, testimony of the applicant was uh, they'll have no more than three dogs on premises. They submitted a plan showing the um, habitation area in the walk up basement. Fully fenced backyard. Fully fenced backyard. Kennels inside the house for when she has to leave. Yep. Stated, uh, applicant stated that. Uh, Fecal matter, for lack of a, however you want to put it yeah. in the finding, Waste will be will be matter. will be addressed and and um, bagged and disposed of. Yeah, just put to be kept in a sanitary manner. Um, Applicant stated that it, this business was to help augment her rent, and coming out of this kind of nightmare we've been through the last year, I think compassion is prevalent here. Right. Anything else for findings? Uh, she also backed up the conservation area. Yep, that was t that was testimony. Should we move on to conditions? No, but, but there was a there was a finding that uh, the butter was uh, concerned about unattended animals outside and noise. Anything else for findings? Conditions? No more uh, than three, uh, even though that was a finding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to back it up with a condition. Right. 
per plans that were submitted of the uh, dog area in the basement. Is three hundred twenty-nine uh, square feet. Uh, There's not much else you can condition. No, just the um, if if the property is left unattended, the animals would have to be inside. They would always be inside if it wasn't. Yes, yeah, so we just condition. We're, we're closed right now, though. So we oh. just condition so we'll if, if uh, animals will be kept inside if the property is unattended. All right. Anything else for conditions? Good. All set. Yeah. All right. So that was a motion to approve with conditions made by. Just really quick, oh, sir. Would yeah. you have the condition that the animals that are being seen are licensed? And. No. But the dogs themselves are licensed. How are you going to regulate that? Or that they comply with the town's. Because of the town code. Comply with state and comply local with state and local ordinances be regarding. Uh, so they're vaccinated. Regarding pets, yeah. So they have whatever. So that's a nice catch-all provision. Yeah, no, I like that's that. Right. Yeah. All right. Now are we all set? That was yes, a good sir. catch there. I think so. Yep. All right. So that was a motion by Scott, second by Bob, to approve with conditions. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Ms. Hassett, con uh, congratulations and Thanks good luck so on your new venture. Have a good night. Next, we have application 39-21, market car, 159 <coughs> Grand Ave in Falmouth, requesting a special permit to construct dormers, a balcony, and a roof deck to the second floor of the non-conforming dwelling. So application number 19-21, oh, what is this? This is it, right? Uh, 90 J and Jean M. Marketer, uh, 491 Cross Street, Boylston, Mass. Applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to sections 240-3C and 240-69E of the Code of Falmouth to construct dormers, a balcony, and a roof deck on the second floor of the non-conforming dwelling on subject property known as 159 Grand Avenue, Falmouth. For referrals. Uh, from CONCOM, proposed work seems to be within the flood zone only and appears to be within the existing footprint and no on-the-ground disturbance. The applicant does not appear to need file with conservation at this time. Uh, from engineering. <coughs> Application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Grand Avenue is a public right of way in this area. No alterations are proposed to the right of way. Any changes within the right of way would require filing a permit with engineering division. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project was not direct any stormwater runoff to public property abutters or public rights of way. It appears the stormwater runoff from the roofs are directed to recessed planting beds. A five, there is no site work or proposed foundations. Therefore, erosion and sediment controls are not necessary for the work shown on the plans. We plan to show permanent installation of objects not owned by the town, landscape, front walk, in the municipal right of way, which typically requires a license from the select board. We defer to the Zoning Board of Appeals if this matter should be addressed prior to issuance of any approval or if a condition should be included in approval. Uh, and there's a depiction of the items. Uh, the applicant should contact the town manager's office for, for more information regarding licensing requirements and procedures. Uh, the plans show a cobble apron and cobble curbing within the town right of way. When was this constructed? The current Google Street view below is from September of 2011. This work would have required a permit from the engineering. We are not able to locate a record for this work. Cobble aprons are required to be set back a minimum of one foot from the edge of the pavement. We recommend that the cobbles within one foot of the paved surface be replaced with asphalt or concrete to meet town driveway requirements. This work should be done under a permit issued by the engineering division. We refer to defer to the Zoning Board of Appeals that this should be addressed prior to the issuance of any approval or if a condition should be included in an approval, a driveway permit application is available at the DPW engineering office or online. Uh, planning, no comments. 
Water Department, water service in Maine must be on the plans. The existing service is fed from a six inch main in Grand Avenue. Existing service should be renewed due to its age and condition. The water meter should be replaced and installed inside the home if not there already. Uh, fire Department has no issues with the project is drawn. Uh, from health, the property is on town sewer, so no issues from the health department. And uh, no uh, letters submitted uh, for or against. And there is a um, law comparison worksheet that was supplied, as well as a FEMA worksheet. All right. And Attorney Clower, I know you already heard this tonight, but there's only four of us, so uh, approval would have to be unanimous. Mm -hmm. Understood. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney with Ahmet Clower Law Firm here in Falmouth, and I represent the applicants Nandu and Jean Market, Market Car, the owners of 159 Grand Avenue. They are seeking permission to make an addition to the second floor of the existing dwelling. Uh, 159 Grand Avenue is located at the eastern edge of Falmouth Heights, facing a little pond. It's on a lot of uh, 7,559 square feet, and it's located in the residential C zoning district. Presently, there's a four-bedroom single-family dwelling with a footprint of uh, just over 2,150 square feet. It's non-conforming to front yard setback being 6.8 feet where 25 is required. Uh, it's non-conforming to the side and the rear yard setbacks to the garage, though unaffected by this application. And it's also non-conforming to lot coverage by structure being 28.5% where 20 is allowed by right and up to 25 by special permit. The applicants have owned this property for uh, a little over 20 years and they're beginning to transition to this as their full-time residence. They're looking to make the space more useful and comfortable for their family, and are proposing a small addition to the existing second floor, uh, which will allow for a reconfiguration of other space, as well as an addition of a small roof deck. There's no change to the footprint. There'll be no change to the lot coverage by structure or lot coverage by structures, paving and parking or any of the setbacks. The bedroom count will remain the same. Uh, this does require a special permit under 243C due to the existing nonconformities, which states that pre existing nonconforming structures may be changed by special permit, provided that uh, the board finds it's not substantially more detrimental than what exists. It goes on to state the board should consider the standards of 240 216 and whether or not the alteration creates any new dimensional nonconformities, impaired views and vistas, and reasonably conforms to the average dimensions in the neighborhood. In this case, there's no new dimensional nonconformities created. Uh, the existing nonconformities are unaffected as there's no change to the footprint. There's no effect on views and vistas of the public and it is consistent with the neighborhood. Uh, in the residential C district, lot coverage by structure is exceeding 20%. Uh, under 25 requires a special permit. This is at 28.5%, which is where it has been. Um, this district did allow for up to 35% up until 2004. That change took place and uh, rendering a lot of these houses nonconforming. Uh, the board is asked to consider the size and height of the structure in relation to the average size and height of structures in the neighborhood, the effect of shadow on adjacent properties, the impacts on views and vistas from the public ways, and the effects of nitrogen on coastal embayments. In this case, there's no impact to the views and vistas from the public ways. It, the building's slightly higher, um, but it's still well under the 35% allowed by right. The existing ridge height is 19 feet, 8.5 inches. The proposed height of uh, the top rail of the roof deck will be 23 feet, 5 inches, um, well under that 35% allowed. There's no effect of nitrogen on coastal abatements. It's the same number of bedrooms, and it is uh, on town sewer. Uh, and as to the size and height of the structure, we're adding only 200 square feet of habitable space, but it very much is in line uh, with the surrounding properties as shown in the lot comparison worksheet. The project represents a significant improvement for the homeowners. It opens up additional space increasing both the utility and the aesthetics of the home. It won't create any new dimensional nonconformities, and it meets the standards of 243C, 24069E, and 24216. Uh, for these reasons, I believe that the board can and should grant a special permit, and I'd be happy to address any questions that you might have at this time. All right, thank you, Attorney Clark. Any questions, James? I have no questions. Scott? No questions. Bob? I have no questions. Just ride this. Something's wrong. We can just ride this. Come up he up, he's freezing. Uh, Attorney Clower, I noticed that the FEMA worksheet did it come out to be exactly fifty percent? No, it's that? it's well under. I think uh, uh, my re my recollection was that we were uh, twenty thousand some under 
the yeah. allowable threshold. Yeah, 20, 30 under. My apologies. I probably hit the wrong number on my calculator last night. Uh, the roof duct itself must be some view of Vineyard Sound up there. It's going to be, I think it'll be a pretty spectacular view of both uh, Little Pond and Vineyard Sound. If I had a house there, I would want a roof deck. And the second foot, you're going from one and a half to a full, full Yeah, they're second. adding a, basically a shed dormer on the front, which will basically create that as a full second story. All right, that does it for me. Any, anyone? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, members of the public, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? All right, seeing none, back to the board. Motion to close. Second. Motion closed by James, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. What will be the board's pleasure? Go for it. I'll help you out. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with conditions. <laughs> and I'll second. Is this like it's hazing? Motion. Yes. <laughs> motion made by James and seconded by Scott. <laughs> Findings? Go ahead, Mr. Dugan. 243C, 240-69E, 240-216, not substantially more. Detrimental, it's for interior work only. There's no groundwork. Uh, comments from engineering said that there was a cobblestone apron that doesn't meet uh, town code and they cannot find a license. So they're requesting the applicant get a license uh, to move the cobblestone apron a foot back. Uh, Concom said they had no comment because there was no in-ground work um, if the cobblestone apron removal is considered groundwork, they may have to deal something with conservation. FEMA calculations were well below. Yeah, the FEMA calculations were done for the under 50%. It was well below the, um, the required limit. Uh, a comment from the engineering department is that there is some landscaping uh, on the town road layout uh, where a license would be needed from the selectmen. Spectacular view. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, list the nonconformity of the of the setbacks, even though they're only doing interior work. Anything else for uh, findings? Conditions? Uh, per plans. Yeah. Uh, no groundwork uh, allowed, except for requirements of the. Uh, engineering department in relating to the relocation of the cobblestones on the driveway permit. No increase in bedrooms. Yeah, no, there's no increase in bedrooms. Uh, there's only, uh, we could put on findings, there's a slight increase in living space from the dorm upstairs, 200 square feet. Well, let's make that a finding, no increase in right. yeah. bedrooms. Uh, all, all building material can be kept on site. It's a I mean, it's good sized site. It's gonna be interior work too. Yeah, Mostly. just that if they yeah. leave stuff You're gonna have outside, to keep all that dry inside. comes an issue with one down the street. Um, subject to a, uh, they will need to get a license for the selectmen prior to an occupancy permit. And also a license for the driveway corrections from engineering prior to occupancy permit. We have to get a height cert on that one? Or is to that. Does that yeah, extend I, past the peak? The, if I recall correctly, I don't think the railing for they don't the, count. I don't think that counts. No. Not All the right. railing. All but right. you know what? Let's throw on a height cert at framing for the dormer. So we have consistency on the other ones. We're having trouble hearing you. Oh. So we oh. Have to <laughs> height. Well, we could do it. A um. So height cert uh, at framing because of the new dormer. Anything else? Visitation to the deck? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Fireworks visitation, I think. I, I think that's. I, oh, oh, the, uh, yeah, condition from the uh, water department that they need in, to update the service and also update the meter. All right, so if we're all set, that was a motion to approve with conditions made by James and seconded by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Passes you very much. Nicely. Thank you, Attorney Flower. And how would everyone like a five-minute break? Me. Yeah, we could do that? All right. We're taking a five-minute break. We'll be right back.
Okay, we are back and we are starting off with application 40-21, Sage, 130 Sam Turner Road in Hatchville, requesting a special permit to construct a single family dwelling. So application 40-21, Todd Sage, 63 Sidewinder Road, East Falmouth, Mass, has applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit pursuant to section 240-66C3 of the Code of Falmouth to construct a single family dwelling on subject property known as 130 Sam Turner Road, Hatchville, Mass. Uh, from Health Department, Scott McGann, the vacant property is located in a zone two and is limited to one bedroom per 10,000 square feet of lot space. The plan shows a lot with over 20,000 square feet and indicates a proposed two bedroom home that would meet Title V. The plan also shows town water. Uh, we have a copy of a application for a driveway permit. Uh, which was approved on June 28th. With a plan attached. In engineering, application was reviewed for public impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Sam Turner Road is a public right of way in this area. The proposed driveway uh, will require filing a permit, which they already did. Uh, two, we request the board either require the applicant to obtain an approved driveway permit from engineering or that the uh, board include the following condition. The applicant shall obtain an approved driveway permit and post any required bond with the engineering division prior to start of construction. The applicant shall complete the work as approved by the engineering division in the driveway permit. Three, any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project must not directly stormwater runoff to public property abutters or public rights of way. We recommend the board add a condition that requires the addition of uh, dry, uh, dry wells or stormwater infiltration measures for the new roof. The site slopes down from Sam Turner Road and includes minimal clearing. We will require a construction entrance as part of the driveway permit with the proposed edge of clearing shown in the plans which results in natural vegetated buffers to abutting properties. We do not think additional erosion and sediment controls are required. However, given the nitrogen loading limitations for the limit of clearing, uh, should be demarcated in the field in the prior to clearing. We recommend the board include a condition that the limit of clearing be demarcated in the field for review prior to start of construction. We deferred to the Board of Health uh, to review the nitrogen loading calculations. We have that. Uh, and they also require upon completion of construction, the applicant shall post the address of the residence per section, subsection 991, affixing of legible numbers, time limit for compliance. Uh, water department, water main in service must be shown in the plans. The water meter must be installed in the proposed home. The septic system must meet state and local standards for installation in a zone two of a public water supply, including advanced treatment prior to leaching. Conservation staff have no comments on the above reference project. It appears outside conservation jurisdiction. Fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. Assessors have no comment. Planning has no comment. And no other letters submitted. All right. And for the you say health ed, I'm sorry, is health ed no comment either? Uh, health ed no comment, just that it would have to be, um, it's a two bedroom limitation was their original comment because it's a zone two. Thank you. Um, but water did mention the uh, nitrogen loading. So. Thank you. All right, and for the applicant, we have attorney <coughs> Glenn. And attorney Glenn, you've been sitting here, so I know you've heard this, but uh, any approval tonight would have to be unanimous since yeah. there's only four of us. Um, so we're ready to go forward. Very good. What's gonna happen long-term with the board? We, you don't know yet, huh? Well, um, You're working on working on it we do we do have uh, some issues yeah <laughs> we're working on it all right so thank you for reminding me of that so my name is Paul Glenn I'm a lawyer in Falmouth I'm here tonight representing Todd Sage local um, local person grew up here went to school here he has an opportunity tonight to now to buy a lot of land and build his own house on it this is something that he wants to build for himself uh, I'm with Don Bracken here, who's the engineer in the, um, on the project also. It's at 
130 Sam Turner Road. It's a lot of land, about 21,000 square feet. Sam Turner, it's 130 Sam Turner Road is near the um, Sam Turner, Turner Road entrance to Ballymead. It's up in that area. Um, so submitted submitted to you in your application in the application. I think you all have it. It's 24066. So just going back a little bit of history, uh, the town of Falmouth did a lot of upzoning for years, and I think in 1981, the town town meeting passed a lot of different bylaws that said we have to be a little more flexible on this. You, you know, we can't just have um, 80,000 square foot lots everywhere. So they created a whole, really a whole system of bylaws that are in there that allow for lots that are undersized to be built on. We're in an AGAA in a water resource protection district, both of which require 80,000 square feet. So 24066C2 lightens that up a little bit that if you own nothing in common, if none of the lots are in common ownership, then you can just pull a building permit automatically if you have 40,000 square feet. You don't have to come to the board if you have to that. Every provision that I cite here today, um, they all have the requirement that the lots have to be in, not in common ownership in 1981. It has to be single ownership 1981. And um, the first one I just said, if you had 40,000 square feet, you could just go to the building commissioner and still pull a permit under that, under that bylaw. So we have 21,000 square feet. It's a big lot. Um, and you can still come to this board and ask for a special permit. That's 24066C. You have to have 7,200 square feet to <coughs> trigger the jurisdiction to come before you here. Does that make any sense? Do we have any questions on that before I, uh, before I go on? I don't know how often this, this comes before the board. Are there any questions on just how that all works? Everybody's, everybody's good with that, okay. I think the answer is it's rare, but I, I think yeah. we're following. You're following it, okay. I'm putting the sleep starting to talk about the doctrine of merger, so. No. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, uh, okay, yeah. So, no, there's no, the, um, not, this lot was not in common ownership with any other lot in 1981. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, and I'll talk about that as much as you'd, you'd like with that. All right, so it, it would be even more simple or less difficult if we weren't in the Water Resource Protection District we wouldn't need Mr. Bracken here tonight to explain um, all the other requirements that are in the second part of 240 If you, if, if we were in, a, in an AGA but not near any water resources, you wouldn't have to go through as many hoops to come before the board. But in this situation, we are in a water resource protection district, so there are some additional uh, information that was provided to the to the board that you have in front of you. If you, what was provided to you, it's, I try to split it up into two different sections. Actually, the zoning section that dealt with what I've been talking about and the and the fact that it's not in um, common ownership with any other lot in 1981, and then the engineering part of it there that Don will be here to explain um, to you later. So, but just in the engineering section, Don created a couple of maps that I think you should look at. This, this has to do not with engineering so much, but just with the fairness of what we're talking about here. If you look in the map, you'd have to try real hard to find another lot in this neighborhood. I think there is one to find a lot in this neighborhood that isn't built on. Every other lot is, is built on. And this is sitting here, and it's providing 
Todd with the opportunity to have his own house in Falmouth, the town he grew up in. So we're, we're hoping that the board will um, will uh, grant that. D did you get the, um, were you able to look at the plans that we show that, that show the, the neighborhood? Uh, that's the one that shows the, the number of uh, bedrooms in all the lots, all the lots within 300 feet. That's one of the requirements because we're in the Water Resource Protection District. John has that, but right next to it is the one, I think that's it, Mr. Morris has it there, that has all the red, that has all the red dots on it there, which, mm -hmm. which represent homes. Yeah. And you have to try real hard to find another lot that isn't built on it. it, it it's an established subdivision and the other lots have all been built on, and we're hoping we'll do that. So Don, Don is here to answer any engineering questions you have about. I'm here to answer if you have any questions of me too. But that that was all I was going to say for now. All right. So I'll sit down. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you again for the record, Don Bracken. I'm a professional civil engineer. Our office is located in Buzzards Bay. Um, you know, when we looked at this project for Todd, um, the, as Paul said, the lot, by all accounts, meets all requirements for grandfathered lots in Massachusetts. Um, and then we realized under, under that section that we needed the 40,000 square feet. Um, and I've also talked to uh, the Board of Health before, you know, getting too involved with this project, and I also talked to Noreen. As Paul mentioned, the, you know, the bylaw, because we're in this district, um, specifically requires that um, we, we show all uh, or, or find out if there are any wells within 300 feet of the property, which, which they're not. That's one of the exhibits we included. It also, um, you know, re re requires a nutri nutrient analysis of receiving waters and uh, some other water quality uh, analysis work. Uh, unfortunately, we had no examples to go by, and it's pretty vague on what's required. So hopefully, you know, we did our best to, to analyze the property and the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, I'll just take you through the exhibits. Uh, the first one, Exhibit A, um, shows the uh, three resource areas that are overlapping on the property. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with all the overlapping districts um, in Falmouth, the Coastal Pond Overlay District. The Water Resource Protection Zoning District and the state's uh, designated Zone 2 Water Protection District District on Exhibit A. So hopefully you can see where the locus is in reference to that. Um, exhibit B that Paul was uh, talking about a few seconds ago, this, this shows the property um, in the overall scale of the surrounding neighborhood, but we've also added um, the distances from the property to uh, the nearest receiving waters. Um, in, in this case, uh, the southwest corner of the property is about 387 feet from Spectacle Pond and 930 feet to the uh, southeast is Deep Pond. Um, also, uh, 2,600 feet uh, southwest of the property is the nearest town well. Uh, if we go to Exhibit C, um, here we took a look at all the abutting properties uh, within 100 feet of the site. Uh, through the assessor's records, uh, found out how many bedrooms were on each property. Um, as you can see, there are several uh, four-bedroom properties. Actually, there are five four-bedroom properties, three three-bedroom properties, and one two-bedroom property. So the average uh, in this neighborhood are within 100 feet of the property is 3.44 uh, bedrooms per property. And as mentioned, um, this project is limited to two bedrooms under Title V uh, within the Zone 2 area for at the 21,000 square feet. If we go to um, Exhibit D, um, we, we did this highlighted plan to clearly show the areas um, that we used in our nitrogen loading analysis based on the Cape Cod Commission method. Um, you can see that the amount of natural areas, uh, almost 70% of the 
lot is going to be kept natural. And uh, Todd was very specific. He didn't want a lot of lawn area, so we kept the uh, grading and limit of, uh, of work as tight as we possibly could. This, uh, this plan does show a paved driveway area, uh, which we use when we did our calculations, but uh, since getting the engineering comments and submitting for the curb cut plan, um, we revised that uh, paved area to a gravel area which is um, actually recommended in the application instructions for the, for the curb cut, so we had no problem doing that. Exhibit E shows um, the Cape Cod groundwater maps. Um, and as I indicated uh, earlier, the groundwater in this location is flowing approximately southwest. Exhibit D, I'm sorry, Exhibit F, um, the nitrogen loading calculations that we performed. Um, the net result is uh, a, a loading of 6.8 parts per million. Um, as you know, Title, title, title V uh, requires uh, 10 parts per million. That's actually how they come up with the one bedroom per 10,000 square feet approximately. The ne next exhibit was uh, Exhibit G. We calculated the uh, nutrient travel time um, to the nearest receiving water, uh, which was Spectacle Pond. Again, it's a very approximate calculation, you know, um, you know, given the limited scope of what we felt the analysis was required for this. Um, this shows that um, the, the groundwater below this property uh, flowing in a southwest direction would take 132 days to reach Spectacle Pond. Uh, next, turning to the site plan itself. See the lot slopes uh, from the road toward the back of the lot to the west. Uh, there's approximately an eight foot difference in grade from the uh, front of the property to the back of the clearing. Uh, the house was designed uh, specifically to fit into the grade, uh, trying to keep it as far as possible off of the road. Um, the resulting grades uh, do allow a walkout uh, basement uh, for this house. Um, the septic system will be placed in, in front of the house. Um, we're proposing a, a standard septic system. We have not proposed uh, a nitrogen reduction system or an IA system based on the fact that, um, you know, this does meet Title V. Um, the property also substantially complies with the uh, dimensional setbacks required in the AGAA uh, district. If you look at the site plan, a um, couple of things really pop out. 20% lot coverage is required, and we only have 8.2%, and lot coverage by structure and parking, 40% is required, and we have 12.7%. So even with this small lot, um, it's a very small occupation of, of, of the lot. And I think that uh, includes what I have to say. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Sounds good. Board questions. James, Scott, anything? Scott? Mr. Brackens, um, there's what, a 24-foot uh, grade change from the, from the easterly property down to the west, right? Correct. Overall from... And that Over was by the decision for the septic in the mm -hmm. front yard to keep it high? And that is the most level area as well, yes. Okay. Um, and you will agree, though, while it, while it does meet uh, Title V, it's still in a water recharge district. Yes, it is. It, it, yeah. With regards to denitrification. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, Chairman. No problem. Bob, anything? I have no questions. All right. Not exactly a question, but a comment. Our former vice chair, Ken Foreman, uh, <laughs> was a doctor at MBL, and his field of study is exactly this. You missed him by one week. <laughs> he would love be lucky. Uh, <laughs> he would have absolutely loved this application. Yeah. Well, we talked about that. <laughs> Did you? Uh, <laughs> you didn't know that he's under the, he's under the table. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think Mr. Sage, you know, realized we all realize the benefit of it, but. Um, obviously, it's a it's a large expense for a new project. Okay. Understood.
Alright, any other questions from the board? Alright, public comment. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this project? I have, I have one more, if sure. you wouldn't mind. Go ahead. Um, being that it's been restricted down to a two-bedroom septic system, rather than a three-bedroom, it would be less more uh, less expensive to build a two uh, this system, which would knock the cost down to a smaller denitrifying system for this. Well, um, actually, the denitrif denitrification system would be the same. Most systems. Oh, I understand uh, that, yeah. but but you're not spending as much money on the field. Right. Right. Um, Okay. And just oh, one more point I forgot to mention. There's already a two-bedroom deed restriction placed on the property. Understood. We did that before we realized we needed the special permit, so it's already in place. Understood. All right. Any other follow-up questions from the board? Mm -mm. Okay. Would there be a motion then? Motion to close. I'll second it. Motion to close made by Bob and second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. How would the board like to proceed? So, uh, motion to approve with conditions. I'll second it. All right, motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and seconded by Scott. Findings? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, so lot was in common was not in common ownership with any contiguous lots in 1981. Uh, lot uh, was less than 40,000 square feet, so it cannot comply with 240-66C2, and thus needs a special permit. It does comply with 240-66C3. It is the one, one of the only, if not the only, lot on, in the area that isn't built on to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, testimony it's bigger than some. Testimony was they already put a, deed a two bedroom deed restriction on the property. The septic's been reduced down to a two bedroom. Yep, they submitted a uh, sheet showing that there's no wells within 300 feet. They, re they reduced the area of clearing and, and reduced their landscaping to leave more vegetation to address any of the issues that the board may have had. They also filed a non-conformity lot worksheet. A weakened condition, but it must meet all um, WRPD requirement bylaws. Property will be a single-family two-bedroom home uh, with walk-up basement. Not not increasing fill import either. They're, by going with a with a walk-up, they're not importing fill straight from another site to this site. So they're not adding fill to this site because of the walk-out. Yep. Have more than adequate. Uh, Testimony regarding the nitrogen load and the water effects in the Had area. Ask. And just put in there that in a in a zone two, you're limited to one bedroom per ten thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. is in keeping the town's housing production uh, plant. Sure. Uh, Ooh, that's a good one. Right. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. Uh, meets 240-216. There was testimony that the paved parking area is being removed so that it will decrease by 811 square feet the area of pavement parking and so on. Mm-hmm. Want to find out about the actual size of the lot and being appropriate for two bedrooms? Yeah, you know, put in there the, from one of the residents subject property is 21,868 square feet of AGAA zone land located within the Great Pond Coastal Pond Overlay Wildlife Corridor and Water Resource Protection Area. Okay. 
Anything else for findings? No, sir. How about conditions? Uh, per plans, I think already has an application, but applicant shall obtain an approved driveway permit and post any bond to the engineering division prior to construction. Applicant shall complete the work as approved by the engineering division in the driveway permit. There was no order conditions, was there? No. Uh, property must meet all WRPD requirement bylaws. Uh, put uh, subsection 99.1, affixing of legible numbers required, time limit for compliance. Uh, they need to uh, include a limit of clearing, uh, be demarcated in the field and reviewed prior to the start of construction. That would be with engineering. Anything else for conditions? Uh, just even though it's already on there, but just put um, limited to two bedrooms. Is there a referral concerning drywall? No. Okay. I mean, I mean, you can do the sidelines. There's yeah. Triple drainage. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Red in or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything slows up right here. I mean, that's big time. I think there's something for water. Yeah, you know what, you better just, just add on there that they need to have um, storm water infiltration measures for the new roof area, drywalls, et cetera. They're asking for it in the engineering approval. All right, uh, anything uh, else? Yeah. Well, I didn't double check, but water maintenance service must be shown on the plans. We already have it, but just say septic system must meet state and local standards for installation in the zone two of a public water supply, including advanced treatment prior to leaching. All right. That does it? That does it. All right, so that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Bob and seconded by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Yeah, it says it's it, their referral says it's re it, that's basically required, so I think that's what it's referring to. But I'll leave you up to the engineering and yeah, because I don't, well, technically, I don't think it's required, but it's kind of yeah. well, so the water department is saying it's required in their referral. Right. But Board of Health did, did in, in their referral, they didn't have a full plan, so. I mean, you're gonna have to, it's in a water resource protection district, the, the water department's gonna have to approve of it. Why don't you put. Yeah, if, why can't we why stipulate put if, that? Why don't you put if required by. Yeah. Yeah. We need to reopen the hearing to do this, or we yeah, just do this yeah. I mean, they'll have to get signed off by both the departments. Because water's not going to sign off on a. I should do it administratively. Should we reopen the hearing to address that? Yes, I do need to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll make the motion to reopen the I'll hearing. second the chairman's motion. Uh, motion made by myself and second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, as we were saying. So you need to just write that in, however, you decide to write it in that the water department is going to have to be in agreement with the health department. That water, health, and engineering are going to have to agree if it needs one or not. Because health, so is, health is saying they want one. So, I don't right. know so for condition, why don't we need water? leave it up to them to determine? And I agree. Instead of us yeah. imposing that way it's I agree. Agree. I think that way it's fair. So how would you write it? That they would just talk, they have an agreement between the three departments? Only because water department is saying they want one. Yeah, they they're gonna have a permit. They have, they have permit it. as leverage for them to do what they ask yeah. with regards to that. However, you think you do read it. I'm just reading it on the on the referral water department. It says it must comply with this. So that's coming from water, not from health. If they can get the water department to change their mind, 
but when it's in a water resource protection district, I think water is they're going to have to sign off. Who put meet the requirements of the water department? Or? So is that the move? What's that? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, just let, leave it on them to decide. Yeah, they can decide. I mean, they could always waive it. I suppose the water department could always waive it. It's yeah. up to them. You good with that? Yeah. All set? Make a motion to close. Uh, second. Motion to close made by Scott. Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, hearing is closed. And we'll just vote again on the motion to approve with conditions based upon As revised. Uh, the revisions that we just discussed. Uh, so I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll approved. second the chairman's motion. All right. Um, Motion made by myself to approve with conditions and as we had just discussed, revise. Uh, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. All right. Thank Tony Glenn and team, thank you. Good luck. Well, as always, thank you for being here, and especially stay healthy. We, if, if one of you were missing, you no. might just get thing, anything. No, right. Nothing Maybe happens. Maybe you should hope that one of us is missing. I just got a constructive grant. Yeah, go for the constructive grants. <laughs> thank you. All right. Moving along to the last hearing of the night, we have application 43-21, Brown, 159, Up Along Road in East Falmouth. A modification of special permit number 43-20 to construct a pool house with a height of 23 feet in the front yard, more than 50 feet from the property line. So application number 43-21, Fenton and Melody Brown, 159, Up Along Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a modification of special permit 43-20. But to, pursuant to sections 240-68A8 and 240-70D of the Code of Thalma to construct a pool house with a height of 23 feet in the front yard more than 50 feet from the front property line on subject property known as 159 Up Along Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Uh, they have a determination of ap applicability uh, from CONCOM. And the project was approved through a negative determination by the commission. Uh, from engineering, application was reviewed for impacts to public rights of way and public utilities. Up along road is a private right of way in this area. Any connections or alterations to public utilities would require permission from the appropriate town department. The project must not direct any storm or runoff to public property or butters or public rights of way. A note on the plan indicates adherence to this. Four, dry wells are proposed for the new roof area as we typically recommend. Five, given the location of the proposed pool house and appurtenances is in an already cleared area with largely natural vegetated buffers to abutting properties and the lot is situated on a private right of way. No further erosion and sediment controls should be necessary. Uh, water, no comment. Fire department has no issues with the project is drawn. Planning has no comment. Assessors has no comment. For health, the existing septic system is suitable for five bedrooms. 2011 was the install. The pool house sewer run of 173 feet to the existing septic tank will require permitting by the health department and should include suitable cleanouts. Space being created should not be used as bedrooms as the dressing rooms appear to meet Title V's definition of a bedroom. <coughs> uh, and that's, that's all we have. All right. Well, Flower, there's only four of us, so it would have to be, you know. Understood. Uh, good evening for the third and final time tonight. Um, for the record, my name is Kevin Clower. I'm an attorney here in town, and I'm here tonight representing Fenton and Melody Brown, the owners of 159 Up Along Road. Mr. Brown is here with us this evening. They are seeking permission to create a pool house on their property, which is to be located in the front yard of their uh, premises. It is effectively a modification of special permit 43-20, which allowed for a pool and a detached garage in the front yard that was approved last year. 159 Up Along Road is located off of Davisville Road at the very end of a peninsula extending into Bourne's Pond. It's on a lot that is 5.7 acres and is located in the residential A zoning district. Presently, the site contains a single family dwelling with two detached garages. 
Uh, however, there is a permitted 30 by 16 pool, which also contemplates the relocation of one of the existing garages. The structures are all conforming to setback and lot coverage requirements. Uh, as I noted, the, the applicants did uh, obtain approval for the accessory structure in the front yard for the pool and uh, relocated garage. Though to be fair, all of this property is effectively the front yard uh, of, the, of the lot. Uh, they've since determined that they want to build an accompanying pool house and are seeking to modify that special permit as to 24060A8 and also approval under 24070D. Uh, whereas the proposed ridge height is 23 feet for the accessory structure. The proposed uh, pool house will conform in all respects to setback and lot coverage requirements. The lot coverage by structure will be 1.53%. Lot coverage by structures paving and parking will be 2.94%. Uh, to say that's well below the allowable limits would be an understatement. For 24068A8, there are no specific standards set forth in the bylaw for an accessory structure in the front yard, so we have to look to uh, 24216, wherein the threshold question is, does the proposed use have adverse effects which overweigh the beneficial effects to the neighborhood and town in view of the particular characteristics of the site? Uh, the site is more than adequate in size. There's nearly a 500-foot setback to the way. There's a setback of over 100 feet to the side yard to the northeast, which is conservation land and there's over 100 foot setback to the southwest side yard line as well. The proposal does not change the nature or the use of the property. It remains a single family residence. It simply increases the owner's utilization of the property. 24070D, which allows for uh, accessory structures uh, to have a max height of actually 25 feet on lots of two acres and more. Uh, in consideration of this, the board shall require that the lot not be subdivided below two acres and that no accessory apartment be allowed. It has to find that the site is sufficient such that the height will not have adverse impacts on the neighborhood visual character. The Browns are amenable to both of those conditions, that there be no subdivision below two acres and that there be no accessory apartment. Um, and uh, as we described, the lot is certainly suitable for the proposed structure. It's five and over five and a half acres with significant setbacks, front, side, and rear yard. Uh, I believe that this proposal more than meets the requirements of, of 24070D and 24216. Um, there are no adverse effects that overbalance the benefits that we've outlined. I believe the board can and should grant the special permit, and I, along with Mr. Brown, uh, we'll be happy to address any questions that you might have. I do want to note Mr. Brown is actually the architect on, on this as well. He is an architect by trade and has designed this. Uh, so he can answer those questions on a technical level as well. That's good. More questions? Bob? So I guess my only question uh, is, and it's regarding that health referral. So how many bedrooms are in the house now? There's actually three bedrooms in the house and a five-bedroom system. We're not looking for these to be bedrooms. But there is a five-bedroom system. Yes, that's what, the, that's what the health referral said. There was a five-bedroom system installed in 2011. All right, so the, so the one that's shown on the... Is that the one that's shown on the plan that's 1,500 gallons? I believe... Bob, the, ta the tank has nothing to do with the, the 110 gallons a day. It's the field. Well, I guess my question is, so the health referral is just wants to make sure there aren't any additional bedrooms on the property, but yet they're saying that they meet the definition. The, the applicant doesn't intend to use this as a bedroom. No, I know he doesn't. I'm, it's, this is more my issue with the health department. So the health department is saying that you can't have two more rooms in the bedrooms, but the health department is saying they've determined that the two rooms in the pool house meet the definition of two additional Because they rooms. could be bathrooms. Right. You can have as many, you can you can have a house and have thirty bathrooms in your house if you. No, no, no. The health department is saying that the two dressing rooms meet the definition of two additional bedrooms. So it says space being created should not be used as bedrooms. Um, so I think would be amenable to a condition, which I think would address that concern. What because of the case openings, Bob? No, he left. It meets the size. The, the, the dressing room right, by by the plan. I mean, yeah. no it's closet. It's, I don't think you want you don't need to open any dressing no, room. No, no, <laughs> no. And, the, and there's probably two because it, who goes one by themselves? Right. No, I was just asking how you handle a health referral that says. Space created should not be used as bedrooms. By the applicant's conditions. Yes. So why would it? Okay, so here's just a crazy question. If it says that existing septic system is suitable for five bedrooms, and, you can put a and the house has three, then why is the health department even saying that 
they, they don't want these used as bedrooms. They should. That's his opinion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so disregard it. Okay. Anything else, Bob? Mm. All right. Scott? I'm good. James? My concerns have been addressed. Mm -hmm. It's quite the pool house. It, it's beautiful. It's quite the property. It, it, it really is. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a magnificent piece of property. Was it uh, less than a year ago this project was before? Yeah, I was, on, it, it I was on it. It wasn't very long ago at all. And it's a perfect I, ancillary use to the pool. Okay. I mean, it, it, fits the, it fits that whole, that whole run. And that, and that was my conversation with Mr. Brown. Our first conversation was, he goes, as we started doing this, he goes, we realized we wanted a pool house. And then looking at the property, I can see why. But it probably would have went on the initial one being the landmass that's there yeah. and everything's in yeah. the front yard. I, I just think, I, I don't think they realized they wanted it. No, then. no, no, I'm just saying that it would have made sense then as well. Yeah. All right, that does it for the board, public comment. Mr. Brown, I assume you're in favor of your own project? <laughs> I got a lot of problems with this project. Actually. <laughs> All right, so back to the board. I'll make a motion to close, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion to close made by Scott and seconded by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Hearing is closed. No more testimony may be taken. All right. How would the board like to proceed? I don't think we need a discussion, do we? No. Make a motion to uh, approve. Second. Conditions. Second. All right. Motion to approve uh, with conditions made by Scott, and I'll give the second to Bob. Findings? Get it, Ripsaw. All right. Uh, 240-68-88, 240 there's 70, 240-216, uh, properties over five acres. Um, setback is over 500 feet, front yard setback. Subject property is almost entirely yeah, it's front yard. Pretty much. Uh, the structure will not have any cooking facilities. <coughs> stated that they could condition mm -hmm. the two the, the bedroom yeah I don't even think we have to condition the bedroom we'll just make condition that it not be an accessory apartment and it's already yeah. right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, that does it for findings conditions for plans. Yeah. plans I mean you, uh, you don't have to worry about hours you don't have to worry about <laughs> materials materials <laughs> yeah, parking the parking's tight the only thing is trying to find the place if you don't have a GPS down that road uh, and then What's not the wayfinding installed? That they will it takes you to the end of the road, but then you travel 40 miles on the, his driveway to get back there. So, approximate. But, but, <laughs> but it's no, no sleeping. No. Well, I just put it can't be used as a um, accessory apartment, or it probably has to be used as a single family. Can't be rent. Uh, can't afford. It's going to be rented. All right, I'm good with that. Anything else for findings or conditions? All set. Good. All right. So that was a motion to approve with conditions made by Scott, second by Bob. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Enjoy. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. Appreciate your time this time tonight on thank all you. these hearings. So thank you. I think I used to pull hog where the old cottage used to be up there. Right. Cesspool was right on the hill. Except for the the, the deer flies out there. Love that property. Yeah. I remember that the in the old cottage the cesspool was. Oh. Open meeting items. We have voting the minutes for June third and June tenth, and we have both ready. So they're both ready. So I guess my only question, even though they're ready, is that um, you don't need Ed to approve them, right? If no, but Ed always is here to make the motion to approve. So you will have to do that. In his stead, you be and, Ed. and you better do it very well because he's watching. So I will make a motion to approve the minutes of June 3rd, 2021, and June 10th, 2021. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. All right, motion to approve both minutes made by Bob, second by Scott. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, passes unanimously. Uh, up next, we have reorganizing the board. Uh, I know it's a little strange because there's only four of us here, but I did review the policies and procedures of the board. It says that the board shall reorganize, at least in uh, July. We've always interpreted that to mean our first meeting in July. <coughs> uh, and as far as any voting requirements, I think it's just a simple majority. Uh, so that being said, I'll make a motion to... Oh, wait, uh, you want to... Hold on. Bob, were you going to say anything? 
No, no. Okay. It doesn't make a motion to, to uh, reinstall uh, uh, the current chairman to um, his, his place. All right. I'll second. So a motion was made by Scott for my reappointment as chair and second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, make Scott Zelensky the vice chairman. Sounds good. Um, I'll second that. Motion made by James to appoint Scott as vice chair and second by myself. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Congratulations, Scott. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to uh, reappoint uh, Mr. Dugan as clerk. I'll second. All right. Motion to appoint Bob as clerk made by Scott, second by James. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. The board is reconstituted, my friends. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Board updates, do we have anything? Yeah, yes. it's 9-10. Yep. <laughs> so real quick, so the recodification, we met again. Yeah. And uh, it's still not done. All right, progress has been so made. So Noreen will be at the next meeting because I will not be there on the 28th, so she'll be representing everyone. And she was excellent <coughs> at the last meeting. She was. It's very slow. It I is, I, I just, honestly, I do not, I do not understand how they even will get this done at all. So just so you know, the, the intent for the recodification is to clean up and make the bylaw be more usable. Yes. And, and when is that? In the process of doing that, we are also identifying all the issues that need correction and updating. That will be phase two, two. because they don't want it all to be before town meeting at once. So all the stuff that we need fixed? Is phase two. Well, listen, uh, Noreen has brought up a point in the past, the very recent past, and now coming out of COVID. Does anybody feel like it's time to have one of those Saturday morning? We have yes, to have one. Uh, yep. Sooner than later. Yep. Yeah, sooner. To get some of this so you have some direction. But, you know, us not being able to talk about procedural things or any of that. On yeah, our own, I think it was a, it was a very valuable tool back on my the previous board I served on, and we used to do it quite often. And there was usually some good food there. We always had it on the Saturday. Yeah, and, and yeah, I think it's important. Yep. Because one of the things that we're probably going to have to do too is because we're seeing them all the time. These um these lot coverage calculations they're submitting for neighborhoods. Uh, oh. Turns out. I'm sorry, excuse my back. Um, I assumed it was all based on uh, footprint. And it turns out that most of the stuff we're getting submitted is based on the finished living area of multiple floors, which is making neighborhoods sound um, that they're all at higher percentages than they actually are. So we'll need to come up with requirements that when they submit these, they just do it on footprint versus what they're using now, which is finished area doesn't make any sense. That would, I know. that would be a good discussion to have during one of those. Absolutely. We'll have to, yeah. Areas. We should go over actually yeah. a bunch of the issues that we've had on different rules and regulations, even stuff that, you know, the building commission is leaving. So, um, you know, any issues we've had in the past, we're going to have to make sure we write them down for the building department. So mm -hmm. and if they're going to be rules, they have to be clear to us if we're going to try to interpret. They have to be very specific. It's just I think a lot of stuff's been done on assumption and not realizing. I know when Ashley and Sari used to all do the, the calculations, they were doing them the way you do them. So, you know, when we sim get these in the file, I just assumed everyone else was following the same rules. And there's not a ton of them. There's, 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 there's five or six really heavy duty ones that we need clarification on. Yeah. That, that we run into all the time. Right. So even if we got that fixed this time around, that would certainly be helpful for everybody involved. So what, including I think what the I'd like to do is kind of circulate an email to everybody to solicit items that you want to have under discussion, <coughs> and then maybe some potential dates. Okay. If you guys want Absolutely. to look at Pro July, prior to if you want to look at August. Where do you yeah. want to? Sure. Sure. Sure is not a month. No. Nope. July, <laughs> August. Well, where we do don't have to. Um, like we don't. Have to, how fast do you have to post it? It's only a week, right? Technically, a couple of days. days. What for the Saturday thing? Yeah, I think it's what, two we, days. Wasn't it a week before? Yeah, it's, so it's two days. So we only need two days, notice. anyways. Okay. I'd go as soon as whatever the anyone's agreeable to, at least. Yeah. All right. So and the other part check your calendar. You have a lot of meetings. You've got the furthest drive on the Saturday coming over the bridge. He's kidding. Okay. <laughs> that way you can pick up all the food. Remember you said that. Okay. 
Oh, you're in charge of food. It is open to the public. We could ask Ken to bring food. Yeah, he sure. Could, yeah. Ken could he could bring pie in the sky as, yeah. as always. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, anything else? There was one thing. Uh, it's something that I started to circulate, at least with Noreen and Ashley, at the beginning of COVID, and it kind of fell by the wayside because that happened. Um, but I had drafted a code of conduct for the specifically for the board. In addition to the code of conduct that covers uh, every town board, uh, but I think we're a little different since we're regulatory and like any good attorney, I went to several sources and kind of mashed it all together. So uh, we'll circulate that shortly and you can tear it apart as much as you want and add whatever you want and not married to it. That would be good so, for our meeting. Yep, that'll be good too. So you know, we'll take a look at that. I think it's also helpful as you gain new members over the years. Absolutely. Because yep. it is important. Right. Conduct is important. And we are held to a different standard. Absolutely. Being a regulatory so maybe we can. Day. So maybe we can uh, have people circulate a date in July that works. All right. You know, within 30 days. Anything else? I think Noreen, the uh, our identification cards are expired. Mine oh, is. Yeah. Oh, they, they we have, desperately they need those there. again. I keep getting stopped on the properties. Yep. You, you should see me. I showed up on a motorcycle one day. I raised a few eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, if something happens, they can identify you better. Yes. Right. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Sir. I know Ed, Ed must be watching at home or wherever he might be. Hi, Ed. See you soon. Come back soon. All right. Anything else? One last time. All right. Meeting adjourned.